change play itself. I mean, the competitive level starts at four years old. Classic rivalry. Hall of Fame type coaches, great personalities. All three schools, though, they changed the game of college football. Florida State Seminole. Miami Hurricanes. The Florida Gators. You want to dominate your opponents and you want to get stoned? Make sure that you roll up. Roll up, roll up. It's the roll up, it's the vibes. Another beautiful, cool day in the Sunshine State, and I'm kicking it with the illness. Larry on CJ, what it do? What's good, man? I'm over here fighting terrorism. Um, <laughs> Y'all probably hear my cat not come in and talk. <laughs> but uh, everything cool, man. It's down uh, like 50 something out here. That definitely threw me off. It's a frost in the air, man. But I, that's my bag, so I don't care. I was I was excited for this opportunity to be cool out here today. Um, and uh, other than that, man, I'm feeling good, man. How you doing, C? Feeling pretty good, bro. Like like bro said, it's a cool day in the sunshine state down here um, for spring break or whatnot. I was planning on having like a little pool day, but that's pretty much going to be canceled, man. But um, overall, pretty good, dog. Can't complain. It's Florida for you, man. We thought it was crazy because I was talking about it was record damn temperatures up in Tallahassee yesterday, like yeah. 88 damn degrees for early spring, for early March, excuse me. And then we flip it, and, you know, a week later, we're down in, in the 50s or whatever. So, yeah, the weather machine, man, listen to the show, bro. He was like, you know, these boys think it's over. <laughs> they got a curveball for it's sweet. Quick. Yeah, they think <laughs> it's sweet. sweet, man. I can press the button anytime I want to. Right. Yeah, they be like, yo, you got to relax. Show man. you what you real power know. is. Yeah, I, you gonna let them in on the secret? Too late, weather man. We already know. Man, it's been a fun week in the Big Three. A whole lot of shenanigans. Uh, we're gonna talk about uh, the Legacy Weekend up in Tallahassee. Uh, the hiring of, of Billy Gonzalez back in the swamp for his third time. Uh, we have a special guest, John Bostic, five six one legend, former Gator, Washington Commander, Chicago Bears, et cetera, et cetera. We're gonna hang out a little bit. Do some whole some Florida stuff. Go, man, let's get busy, man. You can go ahead and bring John on. But one time for my folks at, at, at vacate.com, be sure to visit vacate.com. Use coupon code ROLLUP at checkout for 15% off of all Delta ATAC products. Um, that includes gummies of the flavor of kiwi, pomegranate, watermelon, and blue raspberry. They have vapes in the flavor of uh, Blue Dream, Straw Nana. Cherry Pie and Bubblegum OG. Again, use coupon code ROLLUP at checkout for 15% off. John, what it do, my dude? Palm Beach legend. You're muted, man. We can't hear you right now. Hit your mic. There you go. There you go. There you go. What it do, my dude? It's still muted. It's got the little crossbar on the mic. Yeah, it's yeah. muted. There you go. Oh, yeah, there, 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 there you go. go. Man, I, said, I, I can't. I can't call it, man. I'm back down in South Florida right now. You know, grinding as usual. You know, uh, I'm gonna get to it. Man, excited to have this conversation with you. Uh, I watched you kind of grow up at the Wellington Recreation Center, the LA Fitness. Uh, go on to play uh, high school ball, college ball, and now you, you're doing big things in the NFL. So excited to hear you, this whole story, how it played out. Your dad played in the NFL. Um, we like to start our conversation asking uh, these you guys, like, how, what was your start to football, your introduction to football? Like, your dad played in the NFL. So I'm curious to what your start was like. Um, my start is probably different than a lot of people think. You know, a lot of people think, you know, when my dad played in the uh, you know, that he had a huge effect on, you know, him getting me started. Uh, but to be honest, you know, my dad wanted me to go a whole different route. My dad wanted me to play baseball. You know, my mom was the one who actually signed me up for football. You know, and, you know, she was like, look, you know, when it comes to, you know, him playing sports, you know, as, as a kid and growing up, like, allow him to, you know, fall in love, you know, with whatever sport that is. You know, if everything's, you know, made for it, then, you know, that's which way he'll go. Um, you know, so they definitely, you know, try to push me toward baseball. You know, I kind of hit people in the head a little bit. Um, you know, just kind of the, the, the nature of football. But, uh, you know, everything everything played out, you know, exactly how it should. Um, but, I mean, that's that's really how, I, how it all kind of got started. And, you know, I, like I said, fell in love. How was, how was your baseball game, man? 
crazy thing is, I was actually a better baseball player than football. Yeah, what, what, what position? You know, but uh, I was I played pitcher. I played a little third, but most of the time I was in the center. Okay. Hey, real quick, John, you on Bluetooth? Are you no, on I'm, I'm on, I'm on Wi-Fi. Is it? You on Wi-Fi? Yeah. yeah, the audio's off a little bit. Like it's uh, yeah, I can. I can I can jump on my computer if, if need. Be. Yeah, yeah, jump on the computer, man. I want yeah, yeah. I want I want a good connection, bro. You know, so I know this conversation finna be fire. You got some dope things going on. I, I want this thing crisp, man. So if you can swap out, hit the link, man. We'll be right here. We'll talk a little bit. Keep yeah. moving. Our fans used to it. It's all good, bro. Appreciate y'all for vibing with us, pulling up, hit the like, hit the subscribe button, comment, ask us questions. Super Chat is always there if you guys have any questions. Um, we're going to hang out with John Boston. We got to get a clear connection. Though. I can't have it halfway, man. Get the um, fans. Like I, I know, we kind of missed the last show, man. Whenever we have these type of guests, um, maybe, maybe some questions you guys have in mind that we don't think of. So if you want to get those off, definitely. Hit the super chat and we can see it right right them there and uh, ask the questions you know that you guys want to answer for sure already already but um cj what was what, what happened the legacy weekend um it looked like you from 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 a standpoint like my perspective just, just keeping it being it looked like you guys had a good list of visitors um the only mishap was the the players not showing up and the fans gonna make up they're gonna bicker about some shit. so what was the vibes yeah, the vibes were amazing, man. Uh, just speaking, well, not speaking, just hearing the um, vibes from in, in, inside the facility. Um, it was real dope, especially from the recruiting standpoint. A lot of those kids, I'm getting to a little later as far as how specific, um, how specific kids feel after the visit. But overall, man, I think FSU put themselves in a really good position. They did a great job uh, because they sold a lot during that weekend. For instance, they had James Weston. He was at, at the Friday practice, and he also threw out the first pitch of the game. Uh, both, he skipped it. Post. He skipped it. He threw. He threw. He yeah, shit skipped on the lake. Oh, yeah. I didn't even see. Oh, I didn't even see the ass to throw. That press me. No <laughs> and he used to boy. pitch. <laughs> exactly right. He used to pitch and play ball. So my boy, my boy, he ain't. I guess he ain't threw threw a baseball in a long time. A lot of pressure, but, man. So many people fault, man. I I, I didn't <laughs> foresee him throwing it like fifty cent of Jay Z though. Man, that's crazy. <laughs> Not from James too. You know, you, you he a catch an Uber out there. Um, <laughs> Oh, lift, 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 lift. Yeah, you we can't do it. We, we, <laughs> drive, we drive everywhere now. We drive everywhere now. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, we, take we, got, care of the guy. we drive everywhere now. You know, we take care. No, as a matter of fact, Florida State took care of it, bro. We uh, gave them special privileges this weekend. Former Heisman, uh, trophy winner. We have your show for wherever you need to go this whole weekend. But he also brought the whole family. And it was also crazy. His younger his younger brother, uh, Jonah Winston, he got offered from FSU. The kid also got offered from like, 2026, Alabama, Texas A&M. Couple other schools off him at the time, but that was pretty. That was pretty. That was a pretty cool moment. The quarterback, for me, uh, he played athlete, bro. Corner, quarterback, receiver. He played pretty much everything. He, they say, he's pretty nice. Like he, he's been starting first as a freshman at Hoover, if I'm not mistaken. No, I'm sorry. He he started as a freshman and transferred over to Hoover. Has been mm. been balling over there at Hoover. So they say Jones is pretty nice on the uh, on the football field. Probably a better athlete as far as like wiggle and explosiveness than uh, Jameis. So. That's going to be something interesting to watch um, in a couple of years once that time comes. But no, overall, it was pretty good. And also, Jermaine Johnson, he, he was in town. He got his break for being an All-American. So a lot of recruits got to see that. That is strange in regards to, you know, Jermaine coming over for one year and and getting his brick and grade within uh, Doak and that type of deal. It was pretty cool. Uh, Corey Simon was in town. Uh, Kiara Thomas and uh, – Jay Sean Corbin and a couple of others, but the main misses was Jalen Ramsey and Derwin James. And of course, I I didn't really care too much about it after the fact because my, the main the main point for the weekend is for the recruits, right? If the recruits vibe and I'm cool, whoever come as well come. But you know, I guess they let trolls get to them and a lot of them. Um, yeah, that should be working, bro. FSU fans, it do work, man. I, I see it from every fan base because I see Miami fans and also Miami ass like two months ago. They were telling me, you know, rent free. All you think about is us, this, that, and other. Yeah, yeah. Fast forward, the Florida fans saying the same exact shit. So I know I'm doing something right. It's literally, both fan bases saying, you know, yeah, yeah. all you think about is us, that type of deal. So I'm pretty sure the trolls. Uh, when I get rent free, I know, like, yeah, this shit is. Oh, it's, it's winning. It's like the it's water winning. drop, like the torture shit, like the Chinese, what is the Chinese water yeah, drop yeah. shit? Yeah. Oh, shit. Benjamin. Y'all yeah, too is like. Drive me nuts. Y'all two is like fucking Ryu and Kenneth that shit. So <laughs> <laughs> just like, why? Like, 
squad of y'all but never mind <laughs> So Bro, I, lo- I logged off. I shot a couple of jokes about about the players not coming. Logged off. Pause. Uh, logged off. I get back on, man. The next morning, I see people firing Brandon Sinone at two four seven. Like <laughs> people want explanations to why these players didn't show up. Like, man, why do y'all care? Bro, it ain't that damn serious, man. But it was it was good times, man. I it's, appreciate it's y'all. Another thing too, man. The fans. I, I shot them two down this. First of all, y'all getting out raiding, and letting these shows get to you. And now you just going on the damn tip of trash about the wrong fucking people. You blaming damn uh, to know for the players not coming up. It's about verifying his, his source. His source was fucking Florida State University, bro. That was his fucking source, man. They don't get more. <laughs> Which one the man? DM him that, hey, this is the guy from 247. Or yeah. I, like try to, I like it because they have hey, like, like this. They call him Jalen Ramsey. This is Brendan A5. <laughs> yeah. I yeah, like <laughs> Who is going to snatch Derwin James Collar, man? Who is going to snatch Jalen Ramsey Collar? Get your ass on that campus. Like, if it ain't they mama, right now. it's not happening, dog. If they mama don't make them go, they, they ain't nobody going to make them boys go. Something probably rich, man. We're doing rich and, stuff. And those two, they, they rep Florida State like on social media. So they, they rep right. pretty heavily in regards to that type of deal. So, I mean, these shit happens, you know, especially these pro athletes. You know, it's. They try to get back in town when they can, but sometimes, man, there's just a lot going on. When you're making that type of money, you got a lot of business shit on the outside. The only, all, just keep it a bean. The only program going to thrive at, like, getting people back in the town is going to be Miami because Miami rich rich Miami. motherfuckers want to be in Miami. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if I'm rich, I don't want to be in Tallahassee, Gainesville like that, bro, on off season to see some recruits, man. Nah, Fuck right. the kids. Like I- I'm I'm gonna stop these vibes. I got me this yacht. I might as well stop by Green Tree. Yeah, I swing by that real quick. Buster right. Posey was getting, you know, his number retired. Uh, what's his name? Um, Jermaine was getting his brick. You know, these these got, you know, uh, Jameis is throwing out the first pitch. That's these are big ceremonial things. So that would right. make a little more sense if the other guys got other more pressing issues. Don't don't holler at Brandon Sonone. Well, actually, holler at Brandon Sonone. <laughs> yeah, I love it. This is my last sure. thing I want to get about of that um, before we get back to He's crazy for trying to explain to all these exactly. people. Exactly, bro. As a reporter, stuff, like, you, you just add a few to the fire. What you what you respond to these trolls for? Like, for real, man. You getting sensitive because they coming at you about little petty stuff like that. You make you bringing more attention to the situation. Let's let it blow over. You had a good, successful uh, weekend from a recruiting standpoint. You know, focus on that. You you, you yeah. have you have hits, you have misses. That was one of your misses. Is, I mean, just take it and move, take, take the loss on the chain and move forward. It's not that deep. Yeah, we got my man John Bostic. We back at it. You look crisp, man. Nice cabinetry back behind you, man. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I just I changed over to my uh, my laptop, so it looks like it's a lot better now. Oh yeah, yeah. We sound beautiful right now, man. Let's start this over, man. Uh, what was your start to football? Sorry if you already heard it, but we finna start this over from scratch, man. I want to get it crisp, man. What was your start to football? Cause your dad played in the league. Uh, yeah, so my, my start didn't actually start, you know, with my dad signing me up. It started actually with my mom uh, signing me up for, for football, uh, you know, which kind of catches a lot of people off guard. Um, you know, my dad wanted me to follow, you know, the baseball route. You know, he played baseball as well. You know, he was a better, you know, football player than he was baseball. Um, but for me, I was actually the opposite. I was a better baseball player than I was football. But like I said, I liked hitting people in the head. I liked the physical nature when it came to football. And, yeah. And it. It ended up paying off, so, you know, I can't complain too much. Oh, really? Do uh, you think your pops was trying to steer you away from football for, like, injury purposes? or what? Because baseball's a little bit more secure. So you think he was trying to push you towards baseball for that reason? Um, No, more more so longevity. Right. Because even, yeah. even, you know, like I used to <laughs> – I used to hate my dad when we were winning little league. So he coached all my little league teams. And I used to hate my dad, you know, being the coach. Because every year it was like, all right, you know, I'm already playing up a division or two, you know, and it's like I'm the fastest kid on the team, this, this, and that. And, you know, first day of practice, you know, Pops would, you know, get the whole team together. And it's like every year I'd be sitting, you know, right on the depth chart, fullback. And I'm like, bro, like, how this man got me at fullback, bro? Like, I'm trying to play running back, like, you know, like he got me and my dad, that's just how my dad was. And, you know, one of my one of my good friends, you know, his dad was like that as well. Like, look, I'm the head coach. You ain't touching the ball. You know, I give you the ball one or two times a game and that's it. You better do something with it and, and, and call it a day from there. You know, which, like I said, it, it worked out. But it was like he was kind of ahead of his time, like when he was talking about certain things because he had been there and done. It. You know, like going through literally, he's like, look, like 
you know, yeah, I can put you at running back. I can, I can give you the ball 20 times a game. He's like, but that's just going to take a total on your career. You know, your, your you know, longevity going in the future. You know, right, right. when I going into high school, um, I love defense, but I was like, man, I'm, I'm trying to play running back. You know, especially offense needed some help at the time. And, you know, my dad, you know, was like, look, like you playing on defensive side of the ball. You'll be in the secondary, you'll be a linebacker. But he, he even knew by playing me in the secondary, you know, all the way until I got to college, which was going to help. You know, when I got to college, because I was kind of, you know, Charlie Strong, new age linebacker, where, you know, you know, I was stout enough to, to, you know, get between the tackles fast enough to get on the perimeter, but I could, you know, take away most tight ends that he put me on, you know, in the SEC. Um, so I, I was I was kind of a new age, like, for him, because I really didn't play linebacker until I got to, you know, college. You know, and like I said, literally played in the secondary. Um, you know, high school played in the secondary. Um, but that's – so, like, when I when I got there, it was it was definitely, you know, an eye-opening for me. Like, I had to, you know, learn the game and adjust. Um, and, you know, I already had a nose for it. Like, you know, I wasn't scared of contact. So that, you know, made that transition, you know, you know fairly easy, to be honest with you. Just yeah, speaking. I heard your dad. No, go, go ahead, ahead. Go, go ahead. ahead. No, you're good. You're good. You're going around. Right, you're good. See, speaking go of your dad um, and stuff like that, and, and just, like I said, knowing football, you got you come from the Wildcat family as well. Uh, yeah. Your dad is a um, BCU, all of, all, he's all American at BCU, three time uh, um, All MEAC, MEAC player in 1984. He's in the BCU Hall of Fame. I know that because I'm a Wildcat myself, man. So I'm um, just talking about that experience in regards to, you know, your dad playing at Bethune Cookman and, and being the legend that he is at Bethune Cookman. The time you guys come to Daytona and stuff like that, it's a lot of love for him. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, that's the campus, you know, I grew up on uh, when I was little, to be honest with you. That's really the place I thought I was going coming out of high school. Um, and, and, and even, you know, in elementary and middle school, like I, you know, I've known Coach Little my whole life, you know, I've known, you know, Coach Wyatt my whole life, you know, so that's what I knew. I, since with me growing up on that campus, you know, watching Rasheen, you know, Nick and, um, you know, Eric Weems, you know, guys like that, like those were guys that I looked up to. And it's like, I just knew, you know, middle school and high school, I just knew Coach Wyatt was going to be my coach. That's what, that's what I knew, you know, um, Fortunately, like I said, you know, I, I ended up going to Florida. You know, I didn't hear from, you know, Bethune until really December, you know, and I was leaving in January, you know, so it was definitely something for me that, you know, when it came down to it, uh, you know, I wish, you know, that relationship could have been formed, you know, especially at an early age, because I know my dad, you know, had called up there, you know, several times, like, look, you know, build a relationship with this kid early, you know, you never know what happens. Um, That's great. You think why I just thought, oh, well, you know, you get recruited by Florida. There's you no know, all the type of the big the big time schools. Why waste my time? Um, I don't know. I re, I really to be I, to be honest. I I never even asked Coach Wyatt that. You know, um, I know my dad. You know, he was you know going through some of the defensive coaches. You know, at the time uh, when when that happened, um, and you know then he. I mean, he was he basically was getting you know my film to you know coaches that that coached him brought him up you know were still there guys that he taught the game to you know at, at Cookman that were now on the staff there um you know he reached out to coach Stockstill at Middle Tennessee you know and you know coach Stockstill was the first one you know because it's like sometimes you never know like about your kid where it's like well I might feel this way about him but like how do these colleges you know f feel about him and uh you know so when he reached out to coach Stockstill and you said coach Stockstill you know just you know, give me your honest opinion on him. He's like, you know, if you're interested in him, like, let me know, you know, I'd love to get him up there on campus. And, you know, during that time, that was when, you know, you had to uh, put the VHS in, then, you know, burn the DVD, put it in the packet, send it to the recruiting coordinator, the recruiting coordinator watches it, gets it up for all the coaches. So Stocksteel, he sent it to Stocksteel personally and Stocksteel watched it and Stocksteel called my dad back. He's like, look, like, we'll take him right now. He's like, and he come up here, he can play both ways for us. He's like, but if you're asking me my opinion, he's like, he's not getting out of the state of Florida. He's like, but if he wants to come, he's like, we'll, we'll take him, you know. And, and Coach Stock still, you know, he's still, you know, at Middle Tennessee, um, you know, doing very well up there. So, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I love Coach, man. That's my guy, man. Yeah, That's man. my guy right now. Because, he, yeah. like I said, he's a wildcat as well. Um, I, I just found this out recently. Man. He's a wildcat as well. And then uh, on the Florida State portion of the podcast, so, you know, he – he played at Florida State, coached at Cookman, then he just worked on Miami, man. So, coach, man, he he, he might got full, he he might got through and through. <laughs> yeah, man. 
I remember my first introduction to you <clears throat> uh, was just, I used to go to Wellington Rec. Uh, also trained at LA Fitness. So I used to see you around the gym. It wasn't a whole lot of like recruiting and a lot of hype around you, but you could see the athleticism. I was like, yeah, mm -hmm. who, you see him in the gym playing basketball? I'm like, I'm a twitched up kid. You could just see Twitch. I'm like, man, like who the hell is that kid? And shout out to my man, Chris, who, who helped me set up this interview. He said, man, that's John Bostic. He played football over at Central. So I remember, I remember after that, like a couple of weeks go by, I go to, uh, you guys are playing Glade Central. Yeah. And you catch like a slant and went like 60 yards or something crazy. I'm from Bell Glade, so I, that's the only reason I was at the game. Yeah. And then I hear the guy on and say, John Bostic. I'm like, I just heard this name. <laughs> And from there, I started following your recruiting all the way up until you decided at Florida. But what was it like going through, like, Palm Beach Central, which was a new program at the time, wasn't a whole lot of former players that bring recruits, recruiters in and programs in. What was your process like going through Palm Beach Central and, and ascending up to being a highly her heralded uh, linebacker? Um, I mean, it, it definitely was interesting because my process was, a little, was, a, was definitely different. Um, obviously, you know, nowadays these kids can – you know, put a tweet out, send a direct message. They can get in contact with these coaches. Um, you know, we had to we had to go through. We had to learn how the recruiting process was during that time, you know, because from when my dad was, you know, in high school to where I was in high school, technology had changed. You know, the whole process, you know, had evolved, you know, in a, in a, in a better way. Um, so it was basically about putting my name, you know, out there when it when it came to that stuff and uh getting the opportunity you know to do things you know when it when it came to really that that game and you know games in the past where um you know certain games like i you know my coach may not let me play this position they may not let me play that position um but it was just like you know way my dad you know went about this like look you know you take care of business on your end. I take care of business on my end, you know, and, and I was developing, you know, at athletes advantage, uh, you know, under Ed Smith, um, you know, he had me since I was in, you know, a ninth grader, um, you know, it's been, you know, very big for me in my career, along with a lot of athletes in the Palm Beach County area and South Florida area in general, but to be able to keep developing. And it was like, when it was my time to, to take over, that's when I did. It. And, you know, that's, that's what kind of, you know, really, what really put it on the map was my really my soft my sophomore year you know it was like you know i'm sitting at you know 220 pounds and i you know i run a four four five you know on a on a laser and i'm still in the secondary that's what put my name out there you know but i've all i've also been like a very like quiet kid like you know i still you know i'm not really huge into like social media and stuff like that so that was always one thing. And then, like you said, when you are at a at a newer program, especially during that time, you know, it wasn't, you know, Glade Central. It wasn't, you know, Pahokee. It wasn't, you know, Coco, you know, or anything like that. So it was different. And then it was like soon as everybody found out, like, man, they got a kid, you know, in the secondary, you know, that can go that, you know, follows guys, you know, around like at, at 220 plus pounds, like it it changed everything. You know, and then all of a sudden people start really seeing, you know, what I can do. Um, and even, you know, my coaches start putting me in different positions, you know, just because, you know, we had some older guys there and I was the youngest guy. You know, I played on varsity since I was a ninth grader. So, you know, you want to give your juniors and seniors their best chance to be able to put their best foot forward. Uh, but it's like once those guys graduated and I was able to step in their shoes, that was when my, you know, recruiting took off. What, um, I know, you You know, uh, you mentioned Bethune just growing up around the program. So, mm -hmm. you know, us, we always follow recruiting. Oftentimes you hear a dream school, a dream situation. What uh, did you have that coming in into that, um, you know, uh, as your recruitment start to take off? Or did you outside of Bethune, was there another program that was kind of in your heart? Um, Really, to be, be honest, Bethune was all I knew. Wow, I can't, baby. It was, it was, it was all I knew, you know, didn't even recruit, you know, <laughs> and it's, 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 it's something that like, like I said, you know, who knows, you know, obviously, you know, I, everything worked out, you know, perfect, you know, I went to university of Florida. I loved it. Um, you know, I was able to, you know, be under some really, really good coaches, uh, you know, when it, when it stood, came to that standpoint, um, you know, I still remember the first time, you know, going to, you know, a Florida camp, you know, I went, in the summer 
of my freshman year and it was like you know I was a six foot corner at like 205 210 you know and it was like they were surprised they thought I was a linebacker and they thought I was like a junior or senior you know and it was like nah like I'm I'm a freshman and it was like um trying to remember his name uh the first guy that actually ever recruited me uh he recruited south florida very very well he got all those boys from uh oh i can't think of his name went to he went to west virginia then was at marshall and he cider. just you want cider no no there's before him before cider? Was, uh, uh, uh west virginia marshall oh i can't think of his name Holiday. Doc Holiday. Doc Holiday. Doc yeah. Holiday. Because remember, Doc Holiday was the safeties coach yeah. uh, during that time at Florida. And Doc couldn't believe that, you know, I was in the secondary and I was a freshman. And then, you know, him and Charlie Strong fell in love with me, you know, from that point. Um, and then, you know, that fall, I came to uh, Florida, Tennessee game. That was my, my first game in the swamp. And it was like my first game coming in, you know, big rival like that. Um I mean, I you couldn't have drawn it up any better. Like I was, I was sold from there. You know, there were some other schools that jumped in, like LSU. Uh, you know, Clemson tried to come in as well. I was Dabo's really first recruit when uh, when he get, got the job at, at Clemson. Uh, Auburn, you know, was was you know uh, with Tuberville. You know, I, I really really liked them, but it just it came down to Charlie Strong. It came down to Coach Bedford. You know, and, and those guys at Florida. Um, you know, it's just like it, it made it a no brainer for me. And then plus, you know, I was away from home, but I was still close enough where I can get home whenever I want. Right. What was Urban Meyer? Uh, let me ask one quick question about uh, oh, no. his recruitment in regards to Clemson. Uh, what was Dabble like as, as a recruiter? Because uh, especially during that time frame, um, transfer transitioning from a receiver coach, a position coach, who recruited Florida very well at that point in time. He had Florida under um, <clears throat> under um, Tommy Bowden to being the head coach how was he like as a recruiter at that point in time now um, through your process to be honest you know you know you have certain guys you know when they take over you know as a head coach they may change a little bit exactly what you saw him as when he was a you know just a position coach um and then taking over as a head coach he's the same exact guy you know and that that's one thing that really stood out um you know but for my family my father um you know especially you know you got a good man that came in and you know, look like I want to turn, you know, uh, your son, taking him from being a young man. And, you know, when I bring him back, you know, in four to five years, like, you know, I want him to be a grown man. You know, and I, I want to, you know, teach him, you know, not only, you know, on the field, but, you know, how to carry himself off the field, how to, you know, go about, you know, basically this game of life. Um, and it was some, you know, I definitely took a liking for it. They were just, you know, building the new facilities and everything as I was like on campus or like we were walking through. You know, it was, you know, all you really saw was kind of poles and things up. So it was kind of like I had to visualize a lot of things. Um, but like I said, it really just came down. My, my little brother was, you know, very young at the time. So to be able to be around him, you know, watch him grow up and stuff, me being out of state, you know, now they got NIL money. They can just, you know, fly around the country. They can just do what they want now. You now know, with that bro, that's name, image, and likeness of Christ. Yeah, well, <laughs> I don't know now. I don't know. You just saw they just put up that that multi million dollar nil like building like for athletes. They got his own building. I don't know. If oh you yeah. Saw that. Oh yeah. You know, Dabo been playing that game. He could come on Front Street and say say one thing, but we heard about that church. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen, man. <laughs> uh, give us Urban Meyer. What was he like in the recruiting process? A legendary recruiter, man. Um, I dealt with him a little bit in the recruiting process. I dealt more with Charlie just because I was so close to him, um, you know, and then uh, um, Coach Mullins, you know, did a little bit of it. And then Coach Gonzalez. So it was really Coach Gonzalez and Coach Strong for the right most part. Right? Um, <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, and Coach Gonzalez, I'm glad, you know, he's back in Gainesville. That is a, a very, very familiar face for, you know, a lot of guys there. Um, you know, it's going to bring what was Billy like in the recruiting process, man. I need this, this clip up for the socials, man. Um, I'll like? tell you, you know, now, tell, tell me how many years ago it was too, John. Now, <laughs> man, I, I trying to tell my age and all this, man. Yeah, I, I, nah. <laughs> um, I will not go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Now, nah, uh, 
you know, because Coach, you know, Coach Zalas was, you know, he was a really, really young, you know, energetic coach. Um, and it was like the way he connected with guys was just different, you know. And I, I think that's what's helped a lot of his guys, you know, as well, you know, receivers that he's just put out recently. Uh, he's been able to reach those guys. And I think a lot of times uh, we kind of overlook the, the process as of, the developmental phase. Everybody's looking for a portal and this, this and that. Like he really knows how to take guys, you know, take them under his wing, reach the 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 kid as a person, and then be able to pull the best out of them. And I think when you have coaches that can do that and can develop guys and get the best out of them, you know, like a lot of his receivers that you know he had you know, over the past couple of years, they are playing on Sundays. You know, he's had a lot of guys that he sent off and that has has done well. He's produced a lot of guys. But like when it comes to the recruiting side, um, you know, that's a lot of times where coaches miss out on. They, they can't figure out like why, you know, this kid may have gone there. And, and it's about the connection. Yeah, you got all the bells and whistles that, that come with the, the facility, but it still comes down to the relationship. It's still a relationship business, regardless of how you want to look at it. You know, because as you get further down the road, you can be this great coach that's way up here. But if you can't connect with your guys, realistically, you're down here. But you can be a coach that's, you know, three quarters of the way up and can connect with your guys on a different level where it's like, man, I can't let my coach down. I'm going to get it done one way or another. I don't care what I got to do to get it done. And I think, you know, Coach Gonzalez is one of those type guys. Man, I appreciate it. That's going to go well on socials. Um, <laughs> You get, the university, you get the University of Florida. What was your transition like? Because this is like your first time being a full-time linebacker, correct? You played yeah. a lot of different positions and, and been an athlete in college. So you get there, you're a full-time linebacker for the first time. What was that That's process Inside like? drill going on. The inside drill yeah. a little different now. <laughs> yeah. Um, for my first spring, you know, I got there. You know, I got there at 17 years old. So, like, I'm, like, real young. You know, and I walked in. I walked in at – like six one three quarters, and I walked in at two hundred thirty two pounds. So solid, like, no. <laughs> solid, I was solid. SEC rated a little bit. Yeah, so right. yeah, I didn't really have much much to go, and then it was like my first week there. So you know, come in, we start workouts Monday. You know, Friday, you know, we that's our big weigh in day. We got to weigh in Friday. I weigh in at two thirty eight. They like. <laughs> You good. You ain't got to gain no more weight. Right, right. <laughs> you, you situated. They were like, you know, we just working on, you know, uh, we just going to make sure we keep your flexibility um, and we're going to teach you the game. So it was like every day, you know, I would get out of uh, class. It was like most of the guys would, you know, run back. You know, a lot of, there were, I want to say it was like seven freshmen that came in in January, you know, with me. And it was like, you know, all the other freshmen, they would go back to the dorms. And it was like for me, because that was the time they didn't know if Spice was leaving or not. You know, Spikes was most likely going to be leaving after the year they just had, won a national championship. So, like, they were bringing me in, and they were like, you got to start right away. And so I'm kind of like, all right, like, I guess. You know, so it's like, you know, um, I'm a, I, I'll am figure it out. You know, so it's like every day, you know, I was going in, I'm, I'm learning every step of the defense, not only, you know, just the front seven, but I'm learning the back end. Like, that's how I learn, you know, defenses. I got to know exactly what everybody's doing on every single play, you know, because I got a, you know, quick – you know, amount of seconds to be able to, you know, make the call, you know, make the check, you know, get everybody lined up, you know, and, and sometimes you've got moving parts, you know, we in base, we in sub, you know, we in some type of, you know, uh, uh, passing defense like Joker where we might be in a three down, like, and now I've got to move positions and, you know, get to certain spots and I still got to make sure everybody else is, you know, aligned up and doing what we're supposed to do. So it was like me at 17 years old, I could handle that stuff. You know, which they were very, you know, they were surprised, but they weren't because they knew I was in all honors classes growing up. So they knew like, OK, you know, it's not going to be a huge workload on them. It's like, can this translate to the field, you know, as well? Because some guys, they can memorize it in the classroom. But then when they get to the field, you know, they can't retain that information and be able to go and put it out there. So it was like my first spring, you know, I'm running a lot of stuff like with the ones because Spice ended up coming back. You know, he was, you know, threatening to go supplemental and all that stuff. You know, Spike said, uh, Spike was a football player. That one thing about it, like when it came to like working out and everything, that wasn't him. Never will be him. You know, he has his thoughts on that. Um, and I understand that because I've seen him when it comes down to like instincts and everybody and everything when it comes to just linebacker play and just on the defensive side of the ball. I haven't seen anybody with crazier instincts than he has. Like I, I could tell you stories about some of the things he said on the sideline and we, I, right, you know, he, he just talking. 
And it's like, oh, bro, he, it up. he just, he just go and he just do it. And it's like, bro, this man really just did that. So we thinking like, he, nah, he paid him. He paid him. But it, <laughs> that was that was the way he watched film. Like, uh, you know, he might not have liked working out, but this man watched so much film. Like, it was crazy. Like, and that was where I got that stuff from. So it was like, I was watching him. You know, even when I first got to spring practice, I didn't know what my linebacker stance was going to be. Like, a lot of people, they always, you know, make fun of me. Like, damn, why are you so low in your linebacker stance? Strong told me to watch Spike. Spike got in a low linebacker stance, so I did too. You know, I, you know, like I said, I had been in the secondary, so it, it was a little bit different for me. Um, but it was like coming into that spring, um, you know, Spike's practiced a little bit. He didn't practice a whole lot, you know, because just because their season went longer, they wanted to freshen some of those guys up and keep those guys healthy to, you know, make another championship run because they were bringing all 11 back on defense. But I came in, and I started balling, and I started putting pressure on people where, like, you know, the other linebackers were talking like, okay, well, two spots are locked up with Bostick and, and Spike's. And I remember like going into camp, they they got me starting and it was like it was going to be out of Stamper. It was going to be out of uh, A.J. Jones. They were trying to figure it out. And I'm sitting here like, bro, don't put me in there, bro. Like, I, I don't know what I'm doing, bro. I'm just playing, you know, see ball, get ball. And they yeah. really thought like I knew what I was doing. And I'm like, no, bro, like I'm I'm playing see ball, get ball. And I said, I just, you know, I feel like I just been right on a lot of stuff, you know, but I was like, I'm watching the film and everything. But. You know, it's it's a new type of game because you got to think about it. That was right when people were evolving to the to the spread offense and Florida was right. big in that. You know, LSU had some stuff. They were big in that. You know, we lined up in the I formation. That's just mono e mono football. That's 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 will. You know, fullback come down, you know, here like it's either me or you and it ain't going to be me. You know, right. so um, I had to learn all the zone read stuff. That was where it was like, okay, like, how does this, you know, do I got a three technique to me? Do I got a shade to me? You know, if we start switching it up, like, there was a lot of things that, you know, I still had to learn, especially since I knew we were playing a team, you know, like, you know, Alabama, that was a huge West Coast, you know, type of team. I had never gone against a West Coast offense. So I still had to learn the game in a lot of ways when it came to it. So I was like, I was happy that when we got to camp and we got a couple of days in, you know, they were like, look, you know, we're, we're going to play you, but we're going to start the, the older guys. And I'm like, that's perfect for me because I can sit back and I can watch week in and week out. Like I can take my notes of, OK, who we playing? We got Mississippi State this week. We got LSU this week and I can start my notebooks on these offensive coordinators. OK, this is how they attacked us, you know, last year. So it's like when, when it's my sophomore year, this is how they attacked us last year. You know, this is how, you know, third down, this is this quarterback's favorite routes. You know, this offensive coordinator, as soon as he feels, you know, some type of heavy blitz, he's throwing this slant on the backside. Like, so it allowed me to start learning the game from there. Because like I said, I'm transitioning from the secondary. You know, I, I you know, was at corner most of the time. So I was kind of on the island then, you know, I'd be at, you know, safety, you know, really my junior year, you know, and senior year. Um, so it was like coming down and hitting is, is one thing, you know, just fitting on the ball. But you're talking about now I got to read, you know, play action. You know, what type of play action is it a boot? Is it naked? Is it, you know, uh, a shoe? Like there's so many different things that I haven't, you know, learned. And that's what I was seeing, you know, from Coach Saban, you know, at, at, at Bama. Then you had, you know, Mark Rich that was at, you know, Georgia. They were, you know, very pro style. Then LSU was a mix of both. You know, right, right. So it was like being able to do that. And then Dan, you know, when he, you know, got to Mississippi State, that was a little bit different because now it's like, OK, well, that's what I've been going against every day at Florida. So it, it was a mix of everything, but it, it definitely was a it was a transition. Uh, it was fun. It, it helped me a lot through my process. Um, it made me like who I am today, because even like now. You know, I've played in, since I've been in the league, like I've played in a bunch of different schemes and a bunch of different defensive coordinators. Um, but with me being exposed to so many different schemes in college and, and when I got in the league, like I've seen a little bit of everything. So it's like I can kind of relate it to this where I feel comfortable in a lot of these defenses that I've ever played in. You uh, you kind of alluded to it earlier because you're saying about um – how you have to understand where everybody's going to be at all times. So I heard that that got you a nickname, uh, the explainer. <laughs> <laughs> who, uh, who tagged you with that one, man? I saw that. I was like, I, that, that, that's kind of a weird way to put it. But yeah, where'd you get that one from? Um, I'm trying to think it was, it was somebody in that building. I feel it might've been the athletic trainer. Um, or, you know, 
um, just one of the coaches or whatever. Because like, I like I like to know I like to know everything. I like to know you know what's going on. Like some guys, you know, like I tell a lot of these kids now, like um, when you line up, like, and you're doing something, know why you're doing. It. When you understand the why, that's what's going to take you up over the top. And it was like they weren't used to like a young guy asking like, OK, like, you know, I get you telling me to do that. But like, why do we do that? You know, because now it, it helps me understand like, well, what's the weaknesses in here? You know, so like we playing cover two and, you know, I'm supposed to be in the, the hook seam. And I bite hard on a play action and I don't get to, you know, that 10 to 12 yard depth that did come in behind my head. And, you know, all I know is I'm getting cussed out, you know, in the head, Mike, or I'm getting cussed out when we get back to the sideline because we just let up an explosive play. And it's like when you let up explosive plays like that, that loses, you know, ball games. Yeah, man. Heavy football lingo going on right now. What what was the speed of Chris Rainey like? When you get there, and you're a fast guy for a linebacker anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, you're running four fours and all that stuff. But Chris Rainey's a little different, especially on the football field. What was it like first practice you go versus him? Man, you know, because Chris talk a lot now, he talk <laughs> a lot. Up, sure. And and the thing, the thing <laughs> you know. with Chris now, you know, everybody that I had there. And it was just kind of what I, I like doing. That's my nature of, you know, football. You know, that's why Spice and I, we got along so well. Um, I'm going to get one shot on you. One shot in my career on you. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make that thing ring a little bit. You know, and, yeah. you know, maybe a light might go out of there. To a top. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, that's, that's what I've always enjoyed about the physical nature of football. And Rainey was one of those guys that, you know, when you talk about how fast, how quick he was, ridiculous. But I think what really made Rainey special was his stop and start. Him and Percy's stop and start were as good as I've ever seen. Like the way they could put a foot in the ground and take off and go the whole opposite direction and be back at full speed in two steps is unheard of. You know, and then it was like with Rainey, you couldn't get a good hit on him. He wouldn't let you get a good hit on him. Like he had ways where he could just turn his body or something like that. Cause it's like, you know, I had times where like, look, if I get you in this amount of window, like, you know, I'm taking my shot. And it's either gonna be knockout or I'm gonna miss. And it was like for him, it was like I would just graze him and get him down. And it's like, dang, like, why I can't get this kid? You know, <laughs> he, you know he'd be under the pile talking, you know, he got that high pitched voice too. You know? <laughs> But it's uh, that that was a guy, man. I, I love you know matching up against. I mean, um, especially like in in practice, you know, when we do a lot of our one on ones and stuff. Routes coming out the backfield when we do you know our tackle drills and you know get in space it was like I like going got against guys like him every time because when I got to the game, a lot of these other guys I get in space where it was like, okay, like they make a little move and it's it wasn't really nothing because it's like I've seen Rainey day in and day out. Do it, see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, uh, what was what was it like when uh, Urban Meyer? I mean, because um, you had Muschamp came in, but let's, let's rewind a little bit. Urban Meyer announces he has a heart condition or, mm -hmm. or health health concerns, and he's stepping away from the game. Where where were you at, and, and what was your thoughts when when that happened? Um, I remember we were sitting in a meeting. I remember we were sitting in a meeting, and it was just like it. Obviously, uh, it was changed. You got to remember, like, we're all still young. Like, you know, most of us are either 18, a couple of us were 19. You know, I was 18 at the time, you know, when, when this is going on. So it's like, okay, like, you know, where are we going, you know, with the program? Like, you know, who's going to come in? Who's going to be the coach? Who's going to be the defensive coordinator? You know, because Coach Strong – you know, uh, uh, left and, you know, he went to Louisville. So um, it's like it was just a bunch of stuff that was kind of just like up in the air, um, you know, at the time. Uh, but it's like when it comes to, you know, when you're dealing with, you know, health and stuff, um, you know, it, it's it's always tough because, you, you know, people think, oh, well, it's just football. But, you know, football can take a total, you know, on your health, you know, not just on the players, but the coaches as well, because it's, it's a huge demand. 
And when you got a guy like him that likes to win like he likes to win, um, it's, it's different. It can take that stress on you, you know, day in and day out. So being able to deal with that, how you cope with different things, um, especially with, you know, him winning, you know, two national championships in, you know, three years and, you know, all that, like it, it was a lot, you know, and, and it was, you know, a lot uh, to, to be able to live up to. And especially, you know, how, you know, fans are in Gainesville, they, they want you to win. They want you to win now. They think you should win a national championship every year. And it's hard to do that. It's very hard to do that. So um, just uh, I hated to 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 see it, you know, but, um, you know, then uh, Muschamp came in um, and that I'm going to be honest, that was really the turning point, like in my career where I really went like that. Like, uh, I don't think people really know unless you've played for him. You can't or been on the staff with him how good of a coach he really is. Like when I tell you like genius on the, on the defensive side of the ball, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. Like um, that was when I got to the NFL, I was so far ahead of all these other rookies and even certain guys that had been in the lead a couple of years because of the scheme that we played in, you know, like w- when they came in, Dan Quinn, uh, you know, him, you know, T-Rob, uh, you know, Charlie Weiss and, and, and those guys, um, they asked us straight up, like, you know, which a lot of guys wanted to play on Sundays, but that was something, you know, they wanted to look us in our eyes. Like, this is something that y'all want. Like, we see a lot of y'all that are going to be draft picks. Is this something that y'all really want? Because is this something that y'all really want? And, you know, we're going to throw an NFL playbook at you. We're going to give you as much as you guys can grasp. And for us, you know, we had, you know, at two inside linebackers, we had really – Two really, really, really smart guys. So we could do a lot of things that he may not have been able to do in the past, you know, at the college level, just because we could handle more than the average, you know, guys. And that's where our defense, you know, especially we took a huge step in in 2011. But, you know, they didn't really throw it all at us because they still had to teach a lot of the D linemen that were young and, you know, athletic, like Sharif Floyd, like easily, you know, Dante Fowler, you know, Bullard, like they had to teach those guys, you know, how to play up front, you know, cause they were just athletes before. Now it's like, look, we're getting ready to teach y'all how y'all can go make some money at the next level, how you can be valuable to some of these NFL teams where, you know, you're going to learn how to two gap. We can, you already know how to get up the field, but it's like, how, how many different schemes can you play in? Can you do different things in different weeks? You know, this week, hey, we may need you to keep the the mic clean because they run this type of, you know, run scheme and we got to get him over the top so he can make this play. We were able to do that and those guys bought into that. So it took them uh, a while to learn that stuff because it's not easy. You know, it took them a while to learn that stuff in 2011. It was like when we hit 2012 and, you know, we were fully grown, like it was it was a different animal. You know, and that and that's where our defense, you know, really, really took off. And you know, a lot of people don't know, like we were. We were a 4-3 team, but we run 3-4-2. So we were running both. You know, usually you only get one or the other. We right. ran both because we were that smart. And we we ran both because it confused teams. You know, a tight end might trade and, you know, or motion across or whatever. And you might see us in a 4-3 and you go across, you might begin to a 3-4. And now all of a sudden it's starting to mess offenses up because now they got to go from you know four down front to an odd front and you know it causes a bunch of confusion at the line of scrimmage and all we need is a little bit of confusion and easily's in the backfield sharif's in the backfield you know powell's coming off the edge like we we had a really really good defense when it came to that and and what you know he built down there um you know it, it was really really special um because a lot of us you know played a good amount of years like i just finished up year 10 getting ready to go into year 11 this year That's you cool. know so um you know to think that i i i did that you know from what coach quinn and and um you know coach muschamp and coach durkin and t rob and those guys you know gave me uh has been huge for me because this i mean there was what 25 linebackers 25 or 26 linebackers that were drafted in the 2013 draft and shoot the beginning of last year it was one it was one left mm. and it was me you know so oh, um, that was definitely something you know big when i took a step back and looked at like man like that's special 
you know, to, to especially to hit more than two years anyway, you know, because that's the average NFL career. But to hit 10, you know, it is even more special. So to be able to look back at my career and, you know, see like I wouldn't have been able to do it without those guys, you know, from Charlie grabbing me in, in high school and, and grooming me to Coach Durkin taking over and then Muschamp and Coach Quinn, you know, really challenging me to take my game to another level. Um, it's, it's been unreal because, like I said, th those coaches were very, very special. I remember even after my rookie year, you know, a couple of the, the defensive guys, we had kind of got back and we were like, dang, like, you know, when we was in college, we were so prepared and this and that. We used to get all this information and the lead is almost kind of like a little bit on your own a little bit. You know, like uh, you don't really get all that information all the time. You know, certain coaches give a lot more information than others. And certain coaches are kind of just laid back with it and like, hey, like whatever you get from the film, you get. Um, but, you know, we we were very, very, very well prepared. Like we were down there under under must Give me. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. You're good. You're good. No, you're right. good. What go was ahead. the um the biggest transition like going from Urban Meyer to a, to um with Muschamp? What was the biggest transition for you uh, within that coaching change? Uh, really, it was just going from an offensive minded coach to a defensive minded coach, and that was really the only, only transition. Personalities then <laughs> then was was in the shift, and because Urban nah. is cool, and and and, and Muschamp is, is a little wired up. Who? You said I know he's cool. cool. He's intense. Now, Urban's intense. Oh, yeah. he's, he's a little they bit more chill. They're both the same way. Yeah, they're both the same way. Like they're intense. They get after it. Um, you know, I can say really the the only side that that's probably a little bit different when it comes to Urban. You know, because of his background and his major uh, with the psychology stuff, it was different. And a lot of people really. didn't understand what he was trying to teach you at that time. I, I did it. You know, like I knew as I got older, I really appreciated what he was trying to teach me, you know, from a young age. Like it's going over. I mean, like I said, I got there 17 years old. So a lot of that stuff goes over your head. You don't really understand it. But it's like as you get older, I mean there's a lot of guys that, you know, came and gone before me that I guarantee still never understood like what he was trying to teach you and why he was going about things the way he was going about it um he knew how to push buttons that you've never even thought to push before he understood how to get the best out of you when your best was needed and he would always talk about that stuff um you know Muschamp was the same way he just did it differently you know Muschamp might just talk crazy to you and it's just like eventually you just like man like <laughs> I got to get this thing right. And I ain't trying to get cussed out again in this meeting. So. Right. You got, uh, oh, go ahead. You going, Larry? Yeah, real quick, man. I, I've always wanted, and I know you come up, um, you know, in a household, you had a father that was coach. How do y'all, this is the first time I ever asked anybody, how do y'all deal with that? Getting cussed out, knowing you could kick their ass. Like your whole life. Just deal with getting berated. You're like, man, I could whoop you though. Man, how do you, how do you deal with that? It's uh, it's easy for me, like, cause I remember, like, you know, even in Washington, the last, you know, uh, three years, you know, I had Jack Del Rio, you know, and I remember Jack cussed me out so bad during the game one time. He had cussed me out plenty of times during the game. He cussed me out so bad. <laughs> when he came back and apologized, you know, like, you know, I'm really sorry. You know, I, I shouldn't have did that. And I'm like. You got to realize, like, I, I grew up in this. Right. Like, if I did something wrong, I did something wrong. Like, we're we trying to win here. Like, I, I'm not a guy that's ever, like, taking it to the heart. You know, not a lot, I know a lot of young guys that are coming out now, you know, um, they're a little bit more sensitive, you know, to, to things like that. Like, I grew up in a, in, a, in a day and age where, man, it don't matter what. Yeah, like, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. You know, guys, you know, coach will say some, you know, crazy cuss you out, this, this, and that, and then the guy will be dead wrong, and they still mad. And it's like, well, bro, like he, he talked to you about it in the install meeting. You talked <laughs> about it in your individual meeting. Yeah. You went over the same exact play and walkthroughs. Then you mess yeah. it up in practice, and you mad that he cussed you out. Yeah. Like, Come on, bro, like you, you seen the play three times before you got it. <laughs> yeah. You all in the same way. To it. Yeah, you yeah. know, so it's like that for me. Like I've always understood that and i and i understand you know where these coaches are are 
are coming from. Like it's they're not coming from, you know, to to make a point, you know, whatever. And it's like sometimes it is frustrating, especially when coach has been there, you know, five, six hours, you know, before you got in the building, and then all of a sudden, mm-hmm. you know, they done talked it over three, four times, walked you through it, everything, told you you're gonna get this play. Even they might be holding the script before, you know, we getting ready to run these five plays and tell you, hey, play three, get ready, do and you still gonna mess it up. You can't be mad. He's trying to keep a job too, right? Yeah. Like, you know, like that's 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 their livelihood, but it's also it's it's we all got the same common goal. Yeah. And the same common goal is to win on Saturdays, to win on Sundays, um, you know, and to to feed, you know, all our families. Everybody got the same goal. Yeah. That's That's only two indeed. only two players uh from the five six one. I think only on we the only area code to get the, 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 a player to wear number one at the University of Florida. I think five six one the only only county that got two gators to wear number one, which is uh traditionally a legendary number at UF. What was that process like for you, switching your numbers to number one? Um, you know, it, it was definitely something uh, during that time period. Um, you know, I, I I hope you know Coach Napier gets back to that. Uh, that was always what we went, how we how we went about it. You know, that number one was went to your best defensive player, went to your best player on the team. Um, and it was something where it, it's, it wasn't something that you just came in, you just picked, like, I'm just wearing number one. Couldn't do that. You know, that was somewhere, you know, it was traditionally, you know, it picked you. You went, you put in the work, you did what you were supposed to do. All right, boom, like, it's, it's your time now. You know, and that's that's a number that uh, has been legendary for a long time. And uh, like I said, you know, I know, uh, you know, Coach Napier is going to do a lot of great things. You know, up there, I think even with Coach Gonzalez, you know, back up there, I think you know he'll put that little whisper in his ear. You know, well as well yeah. about that, you know, jersey number. Um, you know, to just because, like I said, it's 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 definitely you know tradition, and it's like keeping that tradition, you know, going forward um, is going to be huge. But I I know you know after sitting down with you know Coach Napier, like he. You know, he, he listens when it comes to, to a lot of these things. He can relate to these kids. Um, and I say I think the, the most special part like about him, like he's a good person. You know, that that's really the most special thing that I've noticed from him, you know, so far. Like he's down to earth. You know, he's honest with these kids. Um, and, you know, he wants to do right by these kids and, you know, help these kids get to where they want to get to. Um you know, and like I said, I know how Gator Nation can be, and you know they they want to win now, and it's like, yeah. you know, you, you give him his time, um, you know, he's building something special. You know, it's you know, if you look at towards the end of the season, you know, a lot of those young guys he came in and start playing towards the end of the season. Um, you know, I'm a history guy. Everybody knows me, like when it comes to just history in general. But it's like even like when it comes to like football and stuff. You know, you go back to Saban's first year at Alabama. You know, it wasn't like what you see now. But if you understand what he did that first year at Alabama, he started a lot of young guys. He started a lot of young guys. So it's like to be able to see how he's bringing over a place that he grew up under um, and, and and being able to bring a lot of that here, but put it, you know, your own little twist to it, um, I think is, is, is going to be special, you know, for us going forward. Um, and, you know, obviously we just built this, you know, crazy facility, um, you know, I think when when time's given and we're able to, re, you know, replace these guys and these you know younger guys are starting to to grow up and, and really take over, um, you know, they're going to have some good things going forward. Already, bro. You got to from your from your mouth to God ears, bro. I'm a, I believe in Billy, too, man. Um, and I understand like the long it's to young staff, too. Uh, if you're talking about history, you played on the one of the youngest staffs at that time with Urban Meyer. And you talked about how young Billy is or, or Billy Gonzalez was at that time. Uh, same thing with, with, with Billy Napier. You know, it's a different style of what he's trying to build staff wise. But a lot of young guys around him on uh, defense mm-hmm. coordinator, 29. Yeah. Uh, tight end coach he just hired was 34, you know, so some young guys, bro. He, he He's probably uh, one of the, if not the youngest coach in the SEC as far as head coaches. So a uh, lot of growth, you know. He, he transitioned from Louisiana to the SEC as well. It's a transition period. But I do like the first year from what I've seen from a program standpoint and long longevity standpoint, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. draft, what was that like for you, bro? 
I don't want to hold you. I know we got some pro stuff we get to, and I also want to yeah. ask you about the new facility you're building in Wellington. So what was the draft process like for you, my dude? Um, you know, it, it was definitely something where I understood this from a young age. Um, you know, I understood this process because my dad would talk to me, you know, about it. He talked to me about the NFL side, you know, since I was little. And, you know, he'd say, look, you know, you might not understand this today. You might not understand this tomorrow. But at one point in your life, you may have a chance to understand what I'm telling you at this moment, like when it pertains to, you know, football and, you know, wanting to play in the NFL and how this whole business works. Um, so it's like I already had a heads up going in. I knew what to expect. Um, you know, my agent, um, you know, played during the same time as my dad. You know, they played against each other a few times. So, you know, that was the the cool part. You know, when my agent came in into the house and everything, seeing some of the pictures and, um, you know, so it kind of brought them back down memory lanes and just, uh, you know, lead to, you know, even kind of what you said, talking about the future, you know, he was very business minded, you know, and just me coming out of college, that was what I was about. You know, that's where I knew where I wanted to get to and how I was going to get to it. You know, I felt like this was a guy that could, you know, really help me when it came to, to that standpoint, you know, off the field, you know, too. But, you know, football is football. You know, I, I was like, look, I'm going to go play football wherever I get drafted. You know, I'm going to go there and I'm going to do what I've always done. Um, you know, but I, I always knew like when it came down to it, I was more of a football player. But, you know, the the draft going going to the draft always is a dream. You watch it on TV. Um, you know, you go out there for a couple of days. It's it's crazy. Now, the draft has definitely changed. They got, you know, fans and stuff in the crowd. You know, but during that time, like, you know, it was just quiet in there. You know, like, <laughs> like, you don't you don't hear a thing. You know, all you might, you know, hear is if, you know, somebody, you know, uh, may make a quick like wow or something, you know, when somebody runs a 40 or, you know, in a position drill or something like that. Um, but, you know, the, the meetings are, you know, definitely one of a kind. You know, some some meetings may be a little weird. Some meetings, you know, kind of straightforward, you know, the business, you know, and everything. But it was fun being able to go through, you know, meet with different, you know, staffs and, and stuff like that. I mean, even from when my dad was playing up in Detroit, like, you know, the same trainer that, you know, was there when my dad was in Detroit was still with Detroit. So being able to talk to him and, you know, all that stuff, like it's, it's, it's crazy. Like to think like how small of a world, like it really is. Yeah. Um, but it was just like, uh, it was, it was definitely a fun process. Um, you know, being able to go and experience that, go to Indianapolis, you know, uh, you know, train, you know, down for the combine in Miami at Balmeritos and, you know, meet a bunch of different guys from all over the country, which a lot of us are still pretty close. And, you know, we text back and forth, um, you know, here and there. Uh, but it's, it's, it's all love whenever we see each other. Um, but it, it was a fun process for me. Well, I got one more college question. And I cannot yeah. forget this. Walk me through the uh, Sugar Bowl, Teddy Bridgewater. They, they, hit. they sent you. They, they threw the penalty out, but boy, I was all over my living room hype, dog. Walk me through the play, man. What you saw? Um, you know what's crazy? We uh, like you say, you always get that one shot, right? <laughs> that one shot, yeah. That shot, yeah. Teddy, man. He lined it up. <laughs> we we uh, I'll tell you, Ted, Teddy's definitely the toughest quarterback I've ever played against. Yeah. He Cause we took some I, shots that game. We knocked out quite a few quarterbacks. We played, you know, that 2012 year. I don't Shout have the exact number, you know, on top of my head, but is we not? Uh, I mean, we knocked out a couple because it was it was it was kind of like a mentality that we had, you know, um, as of you know whoever we line up against, like you know they're not gonna finish the game. You know, we had. And I think y'all you know, concussed my quarterback, even though he finished it. I think y'all did definitely concuss the oh, yeah, Antonio Morris to put that thing on. Game. Well, uh, what, 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 who's that? That was Antonio Morris. EJ Manuel, that 2012 yeah. game. The crazy thing is, we knew he was going to put EJ out. <laughs> it's just, this, this, this is the crazy part about it. Going into that game, and this this is how, like, when I talk about, like, Dan Quinn and, and Coach Muschamp, how great of coaches they really were. And, you know, Dan gets, you know, some credit, you know, um, Coach Muschamp gets some credit, but I don't think they get the credit that they really, 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 truly deserve. You know, I know when Coach Quinn, you know, got to, you know, Seattle and everything, you know, everybody really understood who he was as a 
as a as a coach and everything and how he could connect with his players. Um, but I still think, you know, it could be more like when it comes to it. But it was like going into that game, um, we knew going in. And we said, this kid's going to get knocked out of the game. They were like, he does the same thing. They had went back and studied him all his years in college. And you can go even in the NFL, he still did the same thing. You know, and I remember playing against him in the NFL, and it was like, man, this, he ain't learned yet. <laughs> like, <laughs> whenever, you know, quarterbacks, when they, when they have to, when they feel pressure, you know, everybody has something they do. Some quarterbacks are good at stepping up in the pocket. Some quarterbacks are, you know, just take off running. Some yeah, quarterbacks, you know, do the same thing. And his thing was he spins out. That's banned. <laughs> and every time he's like, he's going to spin. Oh, sweep. man, that's crazy. You mentioned yeah. that because I, 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 really have, I didn't even have access to the film you got. Of course, I watch every game. But I knew exactly what you was talking about when you, you said he yeah. does that exact same thing when it comes to pressure. Go ahead, man. That's the like, stuff. They, they brought it up and were like, look, you know, when they get in this formation, we check into this call. When this call comes, they said, whoever's coming, they said, aim one yard up Man, field. Shoulder. Yeah. And, and he going to go to sleep. And, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, yeah, that's exactly what happened. And then the next thing you know, we see uh, Trickett jogging in the game. <laughs> Man, I mean, we were... I think we were like, we were close Slim ass triggers with triggers like 170 at that yeah. point. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, Trickett, you know, hadn't even took taken a warm up snap, no nothing. And I just remember uh, Muschamp called like one of our red zone blitz. I'm like, he ain't mean to call that. So I look at the sideline and they over there going like this. And I'm like, all right. So I look at the DBs. I'm like, he calling zero. And they were like, huh? I said, he just called zero. I said, we coming. Like, they, and then we got back to the side, and they were like, we are going to see if he can throw the ball. They were like, somebody's going to come free every time on this, and we're going to get free shots on this kid all night. He's like, you know, DBs, get ready. We playing bump and run on the outside. Hold on for two, three seconds. We're going to get there. And, so, you know. Um, I like Chip. How you talking about him? I ain't going to lie to you, man. I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah. how, how you talking about Chip? I'm definitely liking it, man. That's, that's some good shit. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. I mean, you look, you look at what he's done – you know, at South Carolina, guys that he's produced over there on the defensive side of the ball as of late. Um, you look at, you know, I mean, just, I mean, look, look at his players. When you talk about tough physical and stuff, look at Debo. You know, then you got, you know, the the corner that's in Carolina, you know, right now. Like, um, you I mean, you look at, like I said, a lot of the guys that he put out, you know, from under him, you know, at Florida. And then, you know, he's been at Georgia as of late. Like, you know, I know they was, you know, rolling and stuff but he's put his touch on that defense as well where you know these guys are are really coming in and they're making plays they're able to play early because a lot of these you know kids that are coming out now like they're not really as polished they're not ready to play just yet you know just because you know they're such a raw athlete or you know usually when you you graduate guys so fast where they're leaving junior year junior year junior year junior year you're never really having a chance to play a bunch of snaps so it's like you might have a good junior year and running around crazy athlete, but it's like being able to develop and understand the NFL game because the NFL game is a lot different than a college game. You know, like NFL is taking certain college elements, but it still has a lot different, you know, meaning like to it when it comes to like an NFL game. Because, I mean, when you get these coaches a whole offseason or a whole week to scheme you up, like it's crazy. Like I remember we were playing, uh, you know, just being from Palm Beach, you know, I give you a. Uh, a name Jimmy Moreland, you know Jimmy Moreland, you know played at played at Royal Palm, and you know was with me uh, uh, my first year in Washington. He was a starting nickelback. Um, young kid came out of JMU could play, and you know Jimmy gets away with a lot of things, um, you know because of his instincts. You know he does things that kind of um, may not be as natural to some guys, but he's very comfortable with doing it. He can get his hands on the ball, and so. Uh, he had kind of was doing some things that he may have shouldn't have been doing, you know, the, the last like week or two of the season. And, um, we were, we were living, living under, you know, and it was making us some plays and we got into the playoff game and the first third down Tom Brady goes at him and, you know, we look at him, we were like, Hey, like, you know, you hot every third down like this game. Right. Cause like you, you, when you go into games and you put certain things on film, yeah, Teams draw up 
third downs where they are specifically going at you. Like they get you cut the next week if they want to. <laughs> that's, that, that's how much deep they, they really dive into this thing. And Jimmy knew, like, right, I got to play by my rules. I can't be doing all this, yeah. you know, superstar Jimmy, you know, out here. But, um, you know, it's, it's something that's that's different for a lot of guys. So when they come in, they got to go about it and, and, and learn the game from that standpoint. Man, I like your approach to just business and, and, and your finances, how you move with your money since you got in the league. Tell us tell us your approach once you got in. Also, you got some advice from your father, but what's, what's been your approach to business since you entered the NFL? Um, I mean, it, to be honest, like I, I grew up in this, like, uh, like I said, since my dad played in the league, you know, my dad would always tell me about certain guys he played with, you know, highest paid at their positions and, you know, ain't got a penny to show for it now. And, you know, all they got is a bunch of accolades, a bunch of stats and, you know, basically living check to check if that. So that was something I never want to, to, to be a part of. And it's like then you saw during that time, the whole documentary, you know, with broke coming out, talking about all these athletes and all I said when I was coming out, like, it ain't going to be me. You know, <laughs> I'm not going to be one of these statistics one way or another. Um, so, I mean, uh, coming in the league, like, I ain't buy a car. I ain't buy a house. No nothing. Like, my first thing I bought was a rental property. I was like, I need this to start making some money for me. You know, and it was like, I started, when I got my signing bonus, I started preparing for life after football before I even took a snap. So to turn around and start buying, you know, this rental property, you know, my, my first year, then coming back and buying this one, this one, next thing you know, now I'm sitting at 22 rental properties, you know, the all three and four bedrooms that I rent out, you know, every month to, you know, single mothers with kids. So um, it's been it's been something that, like, I've been able to give back to this next generation, but also still secure my future and make sure when I walk away from the game, I can do something I want to do versus something I got to do, you know, because um, I love being around kids. But it's like if I don't take care of my money, you know, all that stuff, like I might be able to still do something with kids, but I might not be able to really have a, an effect on these kids lives like I would truly want to, you know, but it's like if I'm taking care of myself financially, you know, I can spend all day in the world with these kids and make sure these kids are getting what they needed, you know, going forward, you know, because I've been there and done it. You know, some of these kids want to get to where I've been. Some of these kids, you know, hey, they just they want to be able to get to college. They want to be able to get a degree. They want to be able to, you know, get their foot in the door and, you know, have a head start to life when it comes there. And it's like, look, like if I got the blueprint to be able to help these kids do it by me taking care of my money and putting it in the right places, it allows me to spend more time with these kids and really, like I said, truly have an effect on them to make sure, you know, I can help get these kids to college because these kids don't know what they don't know. You know, not every kid grew up, you know, in a two parent household like I had to be able to have a successful, you know, uh, mother and father. You know, my 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 mother, you know, she you know has a doctor's, you know, she works for, you know, high up in the school district. You know, my um, my dad, you know, is a pharmacist, you know, the thing going from, you know, playing in the NFL to, you know, going to pharmacy school and, uh, you know, getting his, you know, uh, uh, his license there. And, you know, as a pharmacist, you know, now like. Uh, is it's unheard of you know a lot of times um you know for 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 really for for both of them especially you know where they where they came from um so to be able to like i said give that blueprint that my parents gave to me to this next generation you know it's been huge for me so that's what kind of started my whole thing and you know like um you know like i said i said i'm at my parents house right now um you know guys a lot of guys that make fun of me and talk about how cheap i am you know how <laughs> I do things, but, you know, I just finished up year 10, getting ready to go in year 11, you know, I still live at my parents' house. <laughs> with all the rental properties, man. Yeah, like all, with all the rental properties. You got to, you know, nobody. <laughs> no, bring nobody. the ladies over there, too? Like, that's why you bring, you bring the ladies Nah, over man, there. you know, when, when, I, when, it, when it comes to, to this, man, I, 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 when I have, when I'm at the house, you know, it's, because we're only home a certain, you know, a couple of months out of the year. Yeah. So it's like, with us being home only a couple months out of the year it didn't make sense for me to buy a house you know because it's like, okay if i'm buying a house and it's empty you know yeah you seven them. months out the year you yeah. telling me i'm gonna pay a mortgage on something like that like that's stupid and then it's like i'm in you know virginia you know in, in the county that we in out there where in, in Ashburn, 
It's, yeah, it's one of the most wealthiest, you know, counties in the country. I'm not trying to pay, you know, all that stuff. It's like all of a sudden you start looking at the bills every month. It's like that's how a lot of guys, they lose it like that because, you know, it's like, okay, well, yeah, I can do it. But what about when that check stopped coming in? Right. How am I, I going to keep paying these bills? So for me, it was like, look, I'd rather turn around, take my money, build this portfolio, you know, get ready for, you know, life after football whenever that's time, you know, and – it allows me, like I said, to do what I want to do versus something I gotta do. That's what's up, man. Let's talk so, about this. Uh, it is smart, especially when you talk about, um, you know, seven months. You, you had this place where you, it's gonna be empty for seven months. Why pay? Why pay a mortgage on that? When you when you, when you break down like that, man, it it doesn't really get any clearer. So I definitely understand your perspective on that for sure. Yeah, yeah. a good perspective. Give us a breakdown. You you made some moves and a lot of headlines this past week with announcing the, the new facility, athletic facility out in Wellington, a thirty-eight million dollar investment. Man, tell us a little a little bit about it. Um, so that's something I've been working on at this site. I've been working on it for about two and a half years. Um, but this business model and this plan, it's been about nine and a half. Getting ready to go on ten. You know, like I've been sitting back and I've been watching. I've been jotting down notes. You know, everywhere I've gone, like anybody that's ever seen my notes, my notes don't make sense to anybody else but me, you know, and it's everything in there. And it's from top all the way down. Like, I mean, when I tell you so long, um, but it's going in these different facilities, um, seeing what I like, what I didn't like, what's missing, watching how people treat each other. Like, I'm a very observant person. So it's like I see how people treat each other. You know, when you're in there, when I, I look at the different trainers, where they're from, you know, what they like, what they don't like. You know, I'm always asking random people, you know, people, damn, man, you take all day at the facility. They didn't understand. I was sitting back and I was watching. You know, I'm, I'm learning how these facilities are ran, how they're, how the, you know, business moves when it comes at. Because, yes, this is a new venture for me, but it's it's a different form of real estate. Like when you when you really look at it. Um but like I said, it, it all started was like, you know, I want to do something I want to do versus something I got to do. And I want to have effect on these kids lives. So, you know, I've been in just finished up year 10. Um, most NFL guys or most NBA guys, MLB, they have a camp every year for the kids. Right. Kids come out, they have a blast, you know, they get to meet, you know, a lot of, you know, current, you know, former players, get autographs, all that stuff. Um, I've never done that. You know, like when I first came into the league, it was something I kind of dreamed of. Man, I can't wait to do that. My dad had did this back in the day. But it was like as I sat down, I kept thinking, OK, well, I have this camp. It's cool. Kids come out and have a great time, learn a lot of stuff, you know, just get a chance to be able to hang out with guys, motivate some kids by just seeing like, man, you're OK, I can do this, too. Um, that's one day out of 365 days. Like, what about the other 364? Like, what type of effect am I having, like, on these kids' lives when it comes to that? So that's where this whole thing kind of just changed. And I said, well, how can I put something together where I can have an effect on these kids' lives 365 days a year? And that's where I started saying, okay, maybe I can come with something like this. And then all of a sudden... I started, you know, my little brother's a senior in high school right now. You know, he accepted a football scholarship, um, but I, I've been sitting back and I've just been watching, you know, over over the years. Um, you know, I pop up at these little league games. I pop up at different high school games and, you know, talk to a lot of the local, you know, middle schools, elementary schools and high schools. Um, but I see a lot of these kids that keep slipping through the cracks. And it's not because they, they don't have the talent or they don't have the ability. You know, a lot of this came down to resources. A lot of this came down to maybe coaching. A lot of it came down to maybe just who they had in their ear, you know, may have didn't have the right mentor, may have didn't have any mentors or any guidance at all. And I think for a lot of these kids, like if they just had the guidance, we'd have a lot more of these kids in college, you know, getting a degree and getting their foots in the door in, in cert certain places um, that these kids, you know, dream of going. And so, um, that's where this whole portion started to come and I started developing like more and more when I started seeing um, 
just kind of what was going on like in the community with these kids and you know these colleges and how they're recruiting now and you know offers fake offers you know all, all this whole game is kind of going on it was like man like how can i really change this and have an effect on these kids lives and that's where i said okay i gotta put this academy together for these kids so it's a huge training facility like i said it's, it's 38 million dollars um but i i basically took everything that we need at the collegiate and professional level and what we do on an everyday basis and i'm putting it all in a one-stop shop in this south florida area specifically in palm beach county for these kids um to be able to go to um they can get everything they want when they come to this facility like you're gonna have people that have been there and done it you're gonna have people that have been there and still doing you know, so, you know, for like some of our girls, you know, they're going to be playing softball and stuff for them to be able to, you know, get in the cages and, you know, uh, get grounders behind some of these professional athletes. Like they're going to be in the same practices as them. You know, we want to do that because we want these, you know, kids to see like, hey, like this is what it looks like and this is what it doesn't look like. So like whatever you've been told or, or whatever in the past, like this is how you go about it. This is what, you know, hard works looks like. If you want to, because, you know, a lot of people think, you know, making it to the NFL is is extremely hard. And to be honest, like, it's not. The hard part is staying in the NFL. The average NFL career is two years. You know, as small as that 1% of 1% of 1% is, you know, it's even harder to stay in the league once you get there. And so this facility is to, you know, grab these kids from four or five years old, build a foundation, you know, with these kids from, you know, our, our club teams that are going to go around, you know, the, the the state, you know, locally, you know, regionally, you know, and some, you know, with our national teams, you know, we want to expose these kids. But, you know, it's a it's a different model than anywhere you've seen around the country because we blended a lot of things together when it when it comes to, to that side, because, you know, like I'll give you an example, like for me, you know, my trainer. Is 25 minutes north of me. My massage therapist is about 25 to 30 minutes west of me. You know, my chiropractor is 45 minutes north of me. You know, my uh, physical therapist is 45 minutes south of me. One of my other trainers, you know, is 45 minutes south of me. So it's like I'm always driving like this to keep my body up, you know, and ready to go. And that's where a lot of guys, you know, say like, man, because in the off season, you usually have to pick. Do I want good rehab? Or do I want good training? There's very, 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 very few facilities that you can get both. Usually you're going to get either one or the other. Like if you're going to get, you know, good rehab, training is probably just going to be so-so. You know, you're going to get good training. Like you might be in a contract year where it's like, you know what? Like my shoulder is bothering me. I probably just got to put a brace on it because I got to be in shape. When OTAs comes, I got to do this. I got to compete for this. You know, I got to make this, you know, meet this year. You might take the training and then be like, okay, I'm going to get my surgery next year. Because, you know, or get my rehab next year because it just, it is what it is. That's just kind of the business decision that you got to make. And so for me to take all of those things that we need and put it all under one roof, um, like I said, it's, it's, it's unheard of, you know, and then it's going to be good, you know, for these parents, um, you know, I kind of took the philosophy of, well, I've been gone 10 years in the NFL, four years in college. Right. So I've been, you know, my, my family and I are, are very, very close. You know, I got a younger sister, younger brother, you know, mom, dad, everybody. Um, so it's very rare that we're all home at the same time just because we have a lot of stuff going on. And, you know, it's something that I've noticed just from watching this facility. So as much as you guys think that, you know, me as the athlete has designed this facility, really it's been the mothers in this community has designed it and they don't even know. You know, like I've been sitting back and I've been watching them. It's like, you know, how can I make their jobs easier? You know, how can I say, OK, well, I'm going to take this and put it under this roof. I'm going to take this and do this so the mom doesn't have to go back and forth. Let's think about it. You may have to drop your daughter off at cheerleading your son off at baseball then run back grab your daughter then run back grab your son that's my life bro yeah and then, and then the mom's dad's too bro you help me out so, so so just 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 think of this so imagine you're going driving all over right mm -hmm. then now you got to get something to eat daughter wants this son wants this you want this your wife wants this so imagine being able to drop your daughter off at cheerleading inside the facility 
sons at baseball or football, whatever, outside. Instead of just sitting there wasting time while they're at practice, we got a membership based gym in there. Usually when you have kids, oh, you man. You, I'm so so, so you can you can jump right inside the facility, you know, get a workout in. You can work out in there. You know, we got three different weight rooms on site. So um you can work out in a membership based weight room that is, is huge, it's about fifteen thousand square feet. Then you've got um the uh performance gym so like let's say if you want some type of one-on-one training you know or, or some type of class that you want to go through for you know some of the moms and everything that you know may be new to lifting or new to you know moving their body around like this there's there's different classes they can go to in the performance based gym where you can have your personal trainer that takes you through that or just do the group training um you know in there but it's helping you knock out two birds with one stone where it's like while your kids are at practice for that hour and a half, you can jump inside the gym. You know, you may be in there an hour, get your workout in. Then you might swing over to the recovery room and, you know, jump inside there. You may get in the cold tub, the hot tub, the sauna, the steam room, you know, and then when all that's you know done, you know, you may shower up. And this is the kind of unique part, too, where we blended collegiate and professional sports. We got a whole laundry services there. So it's just like us when we're, you know, in the NFL. It's just like us when we're, you know, at, at University of Florida. We put our stuff on a loop. You put it in the bin. When you come back the next day, it's going to be washed and cleaned in your locker. You know, so not only you shower, do all that stuff, you might hit the chiropractor. We had a chiropractic office in there, too. You might be able to hit the chiropractor office, you know, and get adjusted before you head out and put in on the app what type of food that you want, you know, and grabbing food for your wife, you, your, your son, daughter, all on the way out. So basically i just saved you time you know everything that you need to get done that you driving all over the place that you take you you know two and a half to three hours to do you getting all that stuff done in an hour and a half and then i created you more family time at home with your kids where all y'all can sit down and eat dinner together yeah, Full service car wash. Exactly. yeah i see why you got 127 acres bro, <laughs> <laughs> like that, bro. No, you, have keep, you had to move people out. You had to evict one. All right, man. You've been yeah, here yeah. three days in the street. All right. Yeah, I mean, I get up out of here. That was amazing. <laughs> that was man. Cool. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you started this. Like, where in the process did you hit up? Because a couple of friends that are pro athletes, you started this with. So, how did that work out? How did you guys, along while you was making notes, were they along the, the entire process? Um, Really, it was, you know, as we go about it, like, I'm bringing, I'm going to bring a bunch of professional athletes inside the buildings to run a lot of these academies you know there's going to be some very very prominent names that you're going to see coming up in the next couple of weeks couple of months you know leading up to our groundbreaking of different people that are going to come in and be running you know different parts of uh this academy um and uh going about it you know there's been guys that you know i, I went to high school with you know Devin, travis and i you know one of my best friends you know we're very close uh, you know, play professional baseball, you know, so I leaned on him a lot when it came to like, you know, well, how can I design this baseball side to make sure these kids are getting exactly what they need? You know, we, we played baseball and basketball in middle school and high school together, you know, so we've known each other a long time. Um, you know, Patrick O'Donnell, uh, you know, Pat was funny thing. Pat actually went to Palm Beach Central. Uh, Pat and I ran track and we played football together. Pat actually, before he was a punter, um, cause Pat, me and Pat both actually got drafted to Chicago, but, um, uh, Pat actually was the linebacker when he first got to Palm Beach Central and he had a bright idea by putting me at the punter. I don't know whose idea that was. Um, <laughs> happened one day after practice, I kicked the ball one time and it, the wind had to take it cause I can't kick the ball. And, and like, you're punting for us. And I'm just like, and my dad goes right to him. He's like, don't let him do that. Like, <laughs> it's not going to be good, but, you know, I, I, it was a very short career in, in punting at, at Palm Beach Central. And, you know, when my dad, you know, was trying to convince those coaches at Palm Beach Central, like, you know, you got a weapon over here, you know, at linebacker, like, move them to, you know, punter, like, just keys to play soccer, like, everything. And all of a sudden, you know, <laughs> you know, my dad finally convinced them to move them, you know, over to, you know, punting and kicking. And, you know, the rest was history. Um, but, you know, like a consultant, man, I need to, I need to, I need to call him for some. some he, you know, advice, he, he, man. <laughs> he, he definitely he definitely does with a lot of these kids, you know, in community he offers, yeah. you know, his help, you know, to, you know, any coach is willing to take it, you know, in, in, in the area, um, you know, when it comes to it. You know, I know a lot of 
the coaches that, you know, around when, you know, I was in high school, a lot of them may have gotten poached away to Texas or, or, or Georgia. So it's a lot of new coaches that are in Palm Beach. Um, you know, some of them he knows, you know, he doesn't know a, a whole lot of them. Um, but, you know, I know over, you know, this next year and a half, two years, you know, uh, I'm sure he's going to come across a lot more, more of them just because of everything that he's going to be doing, you know, from the football side, you know, behind closed doors and especially with a lot of the HBCUs, um, you know, on that football side, um, you know, he's got some big plans to, to, to do some things when it comes to that. Um, it was the HBCU. Like, what are, what are you guys playing? We're going to get you out of here in a minute. We got yeah, no, you good. But uh, what, what, HBCU-wise, what, what's the plan? Um, we're going to announce that in a couple of weeks. Uh, oh, I was trying to do it on you. The, the, the last detail, it's, uh, it's huge. Hasn't been done before yet either. Nice. So, um, it's, it's something that's definitely going to be interesting, uh, you know, going forward. And it's really going to help these kids, um, you know, at the HBCU, you know, level, but also it's going to draw more kids, you know, there, you know, a lot of kids are really starting to get their eyes, you know, on, you know, some of these campuses that, you know, like myself that didn't, you know, grow up on it. Um, so they're, they're very interested in, you know, like, um, there's, been a lot of interest as of late um just because of the the culture that's there and then they're starting to see like you know it really doesn't matter where you go at they're gonna find you if you can play you're gonna find you you gotta find the best person who can develop you the best you know scheme that you fit in as a player like you can't pay attention to you know all these bells and whistles and logos and jerseys and uh, you, you can't pay attention to that stuff you know, it's a developmental league. Like if you go and you develop and you do what you're supposed to do, you got a chance. And that's all these kids want is a chance. And like I said, that's where this whole facility kind of came about and, you know, how we're putting it together. You know, like I give you an example, like on the baseball side, we're, we're starting, you know, on the, on the baseball side right off the back. And we'll probably be starting on the softball side as well. You know, especially when we announce, you know, the girls that's going to be coming and running that softball academy, um, you know, it's, it's two parts to it. So you can kind of understand it. Like we have, we're going to have our own, you know, travel teams that are running out of there. And like I said, you're going to have your local, you're going to have your regional, you're going to have your, you know, national teams that are, that are, you know, running out of there, but you're also going to have your true academy teams where, you know, these kids are essentially coming here and, you know, they're going to be homeschool or they're going to be oh, like IMG. You know, yeah. It's, it's a portion of this company. Oh. Oh, man. You, okay, just, okay, just, okay, just okay. When it comes to that standpoint, um, because, I mean, if it's like you do the math, like, you know, our baseball kids are going to be coming in. Baseball and softball are going to be coming in from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., right? So if they're coming in from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., they're taking care of their bodies. They're in the weight room, you know, with their coaches. You know, they're hitting. They're taking grounders, long toss, all, all the things that need, they need to do. And they're being treated like a collegiate athlete when they come in the building. And with us being able to have that, you know, full cafe, you know, we're going to be able to put weight on them. You know, they're going to be able to get their shakes, their acai bowls, all those type things, um, you know, going forward. So they'll have everything that they need under one roof. Um, but also the fact of, I mean, just I get you guys to do a little bit of math, but it's like these kids are coming in five hours a day, right? 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. It's five days in a week. That's 25 hours, right? Then you then you look at the other side. So if you got kids that are in high school, let's just say, you know, uh, Palm Beach Central or Wellington or w whatever it is, just, you know, that's right here in the area. You know, if those kids are going to practice for two hours a day, five days a week, you got 25 hours to 10 hours. You get what I'm saying? And then all of a sudden you add it up at the end of the month is four, four weeks in a month. You got 100 hours to 40 hours. When it comes down to it, like I said, Time, baby. who's going to have a better chance? Who's going to have their best foot forward when it comes to it? And that's kind of like where a lot of high school sports and, you know, youth sports are starting to go to. Not as many kids are playing recreational ball anymore. Everybody's getting to the travel, the AAU, the club teams, because that's what it really matters on. Because, you know, everybody's competing for the same few spots. So it's, it's my take, right? Rook, I don't mean to cut you off. Yeah. I've been saying this take, I think I, I said on this show a few times and also with me, me and my friends talk. Sports are becoming an elitist thing, right? Yeah. Uh, it was a thing when we were young where, like, a lot of kids from the hood, you know, were just hungrier. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But now it's a time thing. Yeah. And, 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 and these kids are going to school. Like, LeBron kid ain't going no eight hours of school today, bro. He's going to school, like, two, three hours, and then he's training with pros. And yeah. that's what you're kind of building, and that's the advantage. If your kid's going to eight school eight hours, ten hours, and playing at the community center, 
they're at a yep. disadvantage from these kids and these parents yep. that are sending their kids to these academies or homeschooling and stuff like that. But that's yep. the future of sports is what you're doing, bro. It is, you know, and that's and that's that's exactly where, you know, um, like I said, we want to make sure we're ahead of the curve when it comes to that. And it's, this is something that, you know, I can help, you know, with my connections, you know, to a lot of these people and, you know, uh, to be able to put these resources and the coaching and the guidance in front of these kids. I'm gonna do that every day of the week. Yeah, man, it's next level what you're doing, man. I got a full comprehension of what's going on, man. Super excited yeah, about it. I'm a Palm well. Beach guy. And we, yeah. we got our own IMG Academy, bro. You got a ambassador in me, bro. You know what I'm saying? Already, man. Super excited. Yeah. Uh, we got to move on with the show. I appreciate you for hanging out with us. John Bostick, 561 legend, Gator legend. Peace out, my dude. Yes, sir. Real quick before we get you out here, John, we got um one of our friends on the show, man, a Gator, Gator fan, um, Bam. I'm going to give you okay. some love. Say salute and all the work you got going on, man. I appreciate that. Appreciate that big time. All right, brother. Appreciate you, man. Yes, sir. Take right, it hold it down, John. Yep. And hell, Wildcats. <laughs> hell, Wildcats. <laughs> hell, <with> Wildcats. <laughs> they ain't even cool, man. They, they, they did drop the ball, bro. Like, that's crazy, every day. bro. I done heard some wild stories, and that's a wild ass story. Especially, you know, it ain't just no random, um, you know. Pops reached down and all. That's what I'm saying. Like, it didn't know it was a random big-time recruit. Like, this is a legacy type of kid. Pops reaching out. Like, yeah, we dropped the ball for sure on that one. Yeah, sometimes like, sometimes they think it's too good to be true. I don't want to waste my time. But he said they didn't start recruiting him to December. To December, just, like bro, he was like, rolling in January. <laughs> One time for the great folks at State Farm, Allen Horn Insurance. Uh, be sure to give them a call at seven zero six six nine two twenty eight eighty eight if you need insurance in the state of Florida, Georgia, Tennessee, or Alabama. Also, you can visit AllenHornInsurance dot com. Uh, but for that, it's an absolutely free quote if you need home auto, life, or any type of financial services or insurance, 706-692-2888. Let's get into some big three talk, fellas. Where we at with it? How y'all feeling? Wait, I'm on the mic. Okay. You sound glorious. Uh, I ain't gonna lie, Larry. You sound glorious. Oh, thank you, man. I, I appreciate even, that, uh, bro. might have been kicking your ass. <laughs> I actually started this show off, I think, on the wrong mic, and I, and I caught it. I, I was, it was sounding weird to me. I said, let me switch something. I think that's where the echo was coming from, CJ. Um, but anyway, oh, that's the mic. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't heard it since then. But I could go ahead and kick it off since we kind of spoke about Legacy Weekend um, as it is. Just some recaps from the weekend as far as um, visits, man. It was a pretty good week, weekend from that perspective. I know uh, Fong put in some CBs and caught up with a couple uh, – Recruits, I'm not gonna get them to everybody. Just some guys that kind of caught my attention. I seen, I seen all the crystal balls because that's what everybody was pl- replying to my trolls with, with screenshots of what Wilt phone crystal balls. <laughs> <laughs> well, these cats here, bro. Crazy, oh my God, guys, bro. Like, this is a hell of a reply y'all boys got going on with this, man. Right, <laughs> right on cue, too. <laughs> yeah. Where's Jalen? <laughs> <laughs> Jalen was in uh, out in Texas doing a podcast with with uh, Crowder and Fred. One of my I, uh, I think I saw that. Yeah, Gator fan sent me that. I was like, oh yes, this is great. <laughs> like, this is great troll, man. You like same, same day, day same oh, day. Shit, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably what he, what he did. When decisions, he got that, uh, when, decisions. When he confirmed, hit FSU up first. Yeah, I'll be though. I already got man. my brick. Man, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Fred and them boys hit them up say, well, oh, shit, I guess I'll slide that way. Then, then he hit FSU up. <laughs> They'll figure it out. Though. Shout out to Jalen. He got that, that Miami deal, man. Miami going to look nah, good. That's dope, man. I'm telling you, Miami making some moves. Miami looking real good. They would have pulled off, you know, I'm a Ravens fan, but they would have pulled off that Lamar Jackson trade. That, the Dolphins would have had my chance. Yeah, man. The yeah, boy would be 8-9, man. Sure. Maybe 9-8. Right. They could be 9-8 this year. Maybe yeah, 9-8. Yeah, you're right. Get over the hump. Yeah. Shout out to eat, but then eat, if Aaron Rodgers come on, we kept, you know some other stuff. Then Aaron Rodgers go to the Jets. That division tough, man. And also the Bills window. That shit we talk about Josh Allen this and Josh Allen that. You know they go some got to have some pressure a little bit because they they haven't got over that hump and that division yeah. is getting a lot better. Yeah, but um, my man E had put a picture of Dion on the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> after Jalen went to the dog, that was egregious, man. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. still got some juice, man. It ain't that time just yet. It ain't that time. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah, the big not 37 yet. on. <laughs> but now it's a couple of kids I want to talk about, man, uh, that, that put up to the weekend. There's a couple of kids that made their first visit to FSU. 
and it kind of opened up some eyes and got FSU uh, pretty heavily involved in their recruitment, which was uh, surprising as well. Um, a good type of surprise. Uh, Cameron Franklin. I know we. I, I talk about all the time about kids from the silk, um, silk said the slave, slave belt, um, slave belt, baby. slave belt, you know, slave belt babies. Like they don't leave home, right? But this kid, I'm, I'm, it, it's like one kid per cycle within that, <laughs> within that, you know, those states that kind of that kind of reel me in a little bit. And this Cameron Franklin kid, he he, he maybe maybe that kid is a four star kid, top fifty defense in the country. Um, said the visitor was huge. The coaches uh, showed a lot of love, and he loved the atmosphere. Felt like they're going to be a good fit for him if he were to choose their school. Um, don't have a set number or anything as far as schools, but uh, FSU is one of the top schools for sure. Uh, spoke about the conversation you had with Jameis and also Jermaine Johnson. And he also posted some stuff on Twitter, uh, you know, talking about a visit. There was a picture, like one of the pictures he posted, it was a picture of him and Jermaine. And it kind of stood out because this this dude this kid was like he was bigger than Jermaine. And it was crazy because you know he's a defense in as well. And Jermaine's a pretty solid, solid size dude, you know, been through college college ready programs, currently in the lead, that type of deal. So that stood out to me as well. Like, damn, this kid is is a, a pretty big kid, you know, as far as um, you know, from a high school standpoint, not even high school standpoint, just period in general. Like I said, we talk about NFL first round draft pick, and he, he was pretty much bigger than him and plays the same position. So that stood out. So Cameron Franklin was a guy that um, they had a pretty good visit and uh, opened his eyes a little bit, kind of got FSU in the picture. Again, these SIP kids, you kind of kind of take it with a grain of salt, man. He's saying all the right stuff. If he come back on campus for an official visit, we'll start paying a little bit more attention to it. Um, Charles Lester, he's been a, a regular on campus, the five-star cornerback out of Sarasota. Uh, so after his conversation with James, man, he was really close to committing. Um, just looking at his uh, YouTube interview and stuff, you can see the excitement on his face and things like that in regards to the visit. So I expect him to be in class pretty soon. I think uh, uh, Fawn dropped a crystal ball on him. Uh, I think he has Georgia or Ohio State scheduled as far as official visits, and then his last official visit would be to FSU on June 23rd. I think by the summer we should have him have, have his commitment. Uh, Jason uh, – Zandamala, offensive guard from Clearwater Academy, former uh, teammate of Lucas Simmons, uh, who's currently on FSU campus, the uh, four-star offensive tackle. Another guy that has some crisp balls rolled in for him. He said it was great. Feels the exact same time every time he comes comes here. Comes here, excuse me, uh, has that home feeling. So I expect him to uh, be in his class as well. Uh, Jordan Pride, we talked about him on the last podcast. He was on campus as well. He had a couple of things to say. He said the, the visit was pretty great. Had uh, had fun listening to the former players talk about their their time at FSU and just talking uh, to all the coaches in general, especially uh, Norvell. Overall, it's a great feeling, like always. But yeah, I still think um, I, know, I think this recruitment's going to go down to the wire. I feel, I feel like um, it's going to be a Florida FSU type of recruitment, where Florida probably have enough some momentum uh, within his recruitment since he's been on campus. We have Florida a lot lately. Trying to build a relationship with Pat Sertan, he said that um, that conversation rather went well with those two. So that's that's something to monitor as far as Jordan Pride uh, down the stretch. I think it's going to be a Florida and um, FSU battle for his uh, signature. Uh, this kid here, man, Peyton Pierce, four star linebacker out of Texas, man. This this is probably the kid I'm most excited about leaving this weekend. Uh, <laughs> Uh, four-star linebacker. He's a state weight weightlifting champion. Never lost a weightlifting match. Just look at his pictures and stuff like that. He looks the part as far as a linebacker. Uh, saw his film after this visit just because I wanted to see what type of player he was. Vicious hitter, um, athlete plays both ways. That type of deal. Uh, he was in he was in Florida rather. He was in Destin rather for spring break and decided to come over for a couple of days because you know it was a couple of hours down the road and was just blown away by, uh, by the visit. Um, said a lot actually in his interview. Just want to give a couple of cliff notes. Said he enjoyed it. Was an understatement. Came over for a couple of days. Uh, he watched film with Randy Shannon. Randy asked him just name two, and this was really impressive for him as far as you know, just the knowledge Randy knows and things like that. He told him to choose two teams in the NFL. Told chose two random teams. I think Randy played like a playoff game. He was pretty much telling telling the kid what's going to happen each play in regards to pass, run. This guy's going to do that. Just by line. Um, alignment in um, Tennessee as far as the quarterback uh, stances, things like that you could pick on as far as, oh, he's going to be running this play, throwing this throwing, throwing this play. So having that film breakdown session with our, with our Randy was really cool for him, kind of opened his eyes up in regards to the coaching. He said, you know, at this point in time, you know, he's really tired of like the recruiting process. He really wants to be like, like feel like what it 
actually feels like what it would be to be a part of the program, right? Go to practices, go in meeting rooms and things like that, get that actual feel. You know, all the bells and whistles, you know, as far as recruitment. Now, I was at that point in time where you start winding down your top schools and stuff. You want to get the real in, in regards to what it would be like to actually be a part of that program. And he got that also, you know, being being on campus. Uh, spoke by Norvell, just his approach to the game, love his energy, conversations with Odell as far as fishing and stuff. So he just had a real comfortable visit. Yeah, uh, said it was an incredible trip and a complete trip overall. And he'll be definitely back for an official visit. Yeah, Odell got to be connected, talking to the Jeez. kids about fishing. I forgot Odell was fishing, still there. <laughs> I, was a I got I got four specs the other day. Tell me, bro, if you if you a fishing kid, if you if you that type of vibe, man, you were, you in the Odell. Yeah, he gonna get the country man, kids. He gonna nail the country kids every time. <laughs> every time. <laughs> uh, last couple of things I want to talk about. Last person, Luke Luke Cromhall, four star quarterback commit. Um, of course, he's a commit, so it was nothing really. He said that as far as the visit that stood up, but it's more more so just. How he feels about current kids that was on campus is just a recruiting pitch. Um, he say he feels good about a couple of the dudes that are on campus. So he can't say anything, but big things are going to happen. Uh, and also, five star uh, running back Cam Davis said he's going to shut down his recruitment. So that's all I got from that weekend as far as. Um, I got a lot of that to uh, mentions. A lot of screenshots of that. <laughs> oh my God, yeah. you, got, you got a full rundown on the weekend, bro. Just off, just off a couple yeah, of tweets. Yeah, it's screenshot me every message. You need to hear nothing, CJ said. I don't need no subscription. Right, man. right. <laughs> all y'all shit. They gave me all the shit. They screenshot and Brennan shit. Everybody. Well, how shit. about <laughs> this? <laughs> right. Did you read this? Like, oh, this. Since Jalen did. No, but that has nothing to do with the fact <laughs> that those safeties and corners didn't show up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, last thing I got as far as FSU talk period, and we can move on to you guys. Uh, Michael Pittman had a hip injury. Uh, it was reported he has a hip injury that's going to be out for three to six months. Uh, so we'll see how that plays out. Could uh, It's going to miss the entire spring, summer, and the beginning of the season is going to be a question for Micah as well. Um, I think it's a big loss in a, certain, in a couple areas. Uh, just the intangible part. You guys know I talk about all the time, just like the blocking and the mentality that Michael Pittman brought to the table. Like he was a dog when it came to those type of things. Um, even going back to spring last year, I said as far as the portal auditions, I'm more excited about Michael Pittman, just what he brings from the, from a punt return standpoint, right? He filled a lot of punts, something we haven't had in a long time. Um, had a decent return. Um, was a decent return. It wasn't great, but the majority was just filling the punts and not letting the, flip, the field get flipped. I think we're going to miss him in those two departments. Um, as far as receiver, I think um, pure receiver, we're going to be okay because we do get Winston right back. Uh, the practice I did go to. He was really explosive um, from his leg injury. So I don't think we miss a beat as far as that. And true freshman Van Drevius Jacobs, he's looked the part as well. Real explosive guy. And also we get um I'm sorry, number zero back. Um forgot his name, had a blank real quick. He had the uh, big catch in 2021 against uh Miami for that um that fourth and fourteen uh game. Mm. Yeah, nobody we get him back as well. I forget yeah, that, man. He got hurt. He got hurt last year. Ain't um, hey, that a bitch? Yeah, this is the fourth and fourteen. And they don't remember. They remember his name. How the legend? Jakai Douglas. <laughs> right, Jakai Douglas. My bad. I, don't, I didn't Douglas, really remember his name either. <laughs> yeah, nah, man. My my dog missed the utility, man. Even, even going back to that Notre Dame game last year, that twenty twenty two year, he had some big plays. But like Silk said, twenty twenty. That 2021, excuse me, excuse me, he had some big plays. But 2022, he was injured for the most part. So mm-hmm. we get him back in the fold. So I think we'll be okay as far as slot receivers. But, again, it's just the intangible stuff that Micah brings. I think we're going to miss the toughness, the blocking, and fielding punts. That's going to be big. Yeah, he's, uh, so from, got, uh, he's from a football family, just like Boston. Correct. So those guys just come yeah. with, like, the, the, know-how, the, know-how, the know-how to approach practice, camp, everything, Correct. rehabilitation. You guys don't know his dad is – uh, yeah. Michael Pittman, he was the running back for the Tampa Bay Bucks for the Super Bowl uh, run in 2002. And also his brother is star receiver for the um, Indianapolis Colts. Yeah. Football family. Yeah. So that's all I got, man. The fellas on spring break this year, man. Hopefully everybody stays safe, man. And, um, you know, be smart. All right. Uh, Florida, Florida's on spring break as well. Get yours off, Larry. Uh, we just, we're just doing, like, recruiting, right? Whatever you got, man. You can, you can, okay. you can yeah, whatever you got. Whatever you got. I'll run through um we'll run through some some visitors we had on campus uh recently. Um so first off we had uh three star tight end Colton Heinrich, uh six four, two thirty out of Cardinal Gibbons. Um he was able to swing by on the ninth. Uh 
Um, we haven't practiced then. Uh, along with him was uh, A.J. Harrison. Uh, he's a quarterback that was offered by Shannon Dawson. He's currently on rank. Um, big body kid, 6'3", 230 out of um, uh, Monarch and down in Pompano. Um, he was also there. And kind of the highlight um, would be uh, linebacker Dylan Williams out of California. Um, spoke on him last week. Um, he came down, had a great visit, um, and uh, it, he was impressed to the to the tune of setting up a summer official. So the official dates aren't there yet, but he does see him how in the program. Um, I, I did once. Uh, once I saw that, I went and checked out his tape. Um, it, it, he's the he's the part of the new prototypical type linebackers we'll be looking for. Um, these guys that could get sideline to sideline, uh, six two. You know, so we get some range, you know, new age linebacks. I mean, it's just what everybody wants, honestly. Um, I am impressed by what I did see on film with him. So uh, part of Mario's ability to continue to work some of his West Coast ties, you know, he's got his he's got his uh, hooks in pretty good over there still. So while he's still um, working on uh, reestablishing Florida connections and getting some new ones, he has been able to maintain some good connections out there on the, on the West Coast. So. He highlighted that particular group. Um, and then we got uh, a few other guys that um, we got uh, Dylan Hip came through. Um, he's a three star tight end uh, out of Arizona, 6'6, 230 kid. He came through on the 12th. We're, I think we'll probably take one tight end this cycle um, just based on the, on the class size we have. We're after a few guys. Um, he was a kid that actually is also uh, connected to a quarterback that we are uh, expressing some interest in as well out of Arizona. Um, Luke Moga, who's 6'2", 190, uh, quarterback out of Arizona. He's actually going to come by. He's scheduled to visit on the 25th. Um, and then you have a uh, four-star defensive lineman, Camarion Franklin, uh, who CJ was talking about a second ago. Uh, you you got me thinking, though, because you called him Cameron. And I was like, wait. But his name kind of looked oh, like Cameron, my, my name. Bad. I don't mean I ain't talked to him. You know, you, you never know. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Yeah, I, I looked up. I was like, wait, I was like, wait yeah. is it Camarion or Cam- it could be Cameron? He come, he come, back, he, he come back on campus. I know for sure. <laughs> uh, definitely that. Uh, yeah, yeah he's from, from Mississippi. What apostrophe at? Uh, it ain't one. It's just K A M A R I O N. But my name's L A R I O N. So right, I was, like, I was thinking Camarion. But two whatever. Two together. Uh, yeah, same kid he was talking about. He set up uh, to come hang out. On the twenty fifth and twenty sixth, so that'll be right after these uh, these guys get back from spring break. That was a big name to know. Um, you know, it's interesting with him. Like I said, it's hard to get these kids out of Mississippi, but it is interesting that he's uh, taking the time to come to the Florida schools. So, it says to me, there's a, there's a good chance you can get this kid out of out of the home state. So, uh, he's this will be his second time. He's already he came and visited earlier. Um, so when he comes back for that that uh, little two day. That would be his second uh, visit on campus with us. So, um, you know, name to keep a, a eye on. Big kid, definitely, uh, definitely a big area need for us in this class as well. Um, and then this week we only had uh, one offer that I'm aware of go out. Uh, Four star linebacker Quay Birdsong, um, six two two hundred kid out of Lagrange, Georgia. Uh, he's number twelve linebacker in the country. And uh, the number 23 linebacker in the state of Georgia. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm sorry, 23 player in the state of Georgia. Um, and what else I got for you guys? Uh, oh, a couple of top groups we made. Um, uh, four-star offensive lineman, Jimothy Lewis, 6'6", six six, 275. He plays over at IMG. Um, it's number 11 interior offensive lineman, number 22 player in Florida. Uh, we're in the group with Ole Miss, Tennessee, Michigan State, FSU, Michigan, UF, Bama, UGA, and LSU. Um, so he still got a big group there. I think I mentioned on here before, um, but if I didn't, I don't particularly anticipate doing super well out of IMG on this cycle. But, you know, it's a while to play. We'll see how some things go. Uh, another IMG kid that put us in this top group, I uh, just mentioned him. Last week was uh, J- Javay Hawkins, um, the, the wide receiver, uh, speedster type kid. 
He just released the top six as well. Uh, we're in there with UF, West Virginia, Louisville, Wisconsin, and uh, Penn State. And the last one I got is a uh, top eight for Chance Robinson. I know he's high on our board as far as wide receivers go. I believe he's probably he's probably like our third um, behind, you know, obviously Jeremiah Smith, who's committed to Ohio State, um, and his his teammate JoJo Trader over there. I would I would say that uh, Chance is probably number three. Um, we're in there with uh, Florida, Ole Miss, FSU, Auburn, um, Georgia, Penn State, and Tennessee. So that is um, – that's all I got pretty much as far as uh, the, on the recruiting front right now. Um, I got a couple of quick uh, spring quick hit, uh, quick hitters, and I'll get out of here. Um, both of the Maui Goa brothers have uh, elevated early on in the third practice to the first team. Um, I'm encouraged by, well, both, obviously Francisco was able to move up to the first team, um, yeah, over without, Corey flag without the pass on. That's crazy. <laughs> well, amazing. you know, they brought him in for a reason too. I mean, he's yeah. a lot bigger. He's, he's a six, three, you know, Corey flags, probably five eleven. um, you know, six foot on, on a great day. Uh, this is six, three, you know, six, three guys got some pretty good experience out there playing at Washington state. Um, be a better coverage kind of guy too. I think that's what Flag's biggest lack in his game is. He's a he's a IQ guy, pretty pretty decent against the run, but I think he's more of a um, liability in the passing game. So yeah, uh, it, like I said, it's early. You know, you give him what I give you what I got <laughs> on the uh, the other the other mile ago. Francis, the five star tackle, has been elevated to first team as well. Um, so across the front, and this will probably be our most interesting position battle it will be on the O line. So as of right now, you got uh you got Rivers, uh JB and Cohen, uh Andy Lee, and Inez Cooper with Miley Go on the first. Uh backups would be Oakland Lola, Seymour, Rodriguez, Sagapola, and Washington. Um but I expect once we get to the season, Zion would probably take back over the left. Um then you would have Javion Cohen, the transfer from Alabama, and Andy Lee would the transfer from UCF would be make up the uh left tackle, left guard, and center. I think where it gets a little interesting is where you go with right guard and right tackle. So I think that'll develop a little more um as we get back in the spring and obviously fall ball kind of figure out. These guys do like the cross train, but I'll lock those three in on on the, from the center to the left. I think the right guard, the right tackle could be um could be interesting as to who ends up there. So um other notes, uh a couple of guys that, that stepped up a little early. Isaiah Horton is a name that I brought up a couple of times. He seems to be developing. Um he he looks to be probably the backup right now to uh uh Kobe George and uh Bobby Washington, true freshman coming in. He looks to be um, uh, back up at the Z. So um, something just to note, guys that are coming in and making a name for themselves a little early in. Within at the at the defensive line, uh, missing Jafari Harvey, um, Harrison Hunt, uh, Taylor's out, and Mesador is out. So a little thin there as far as spring goes. So not a, a ton to pull from that, except Ruben Bain has been um, out there. He does look like he will be an early impact guy. Um, we'll probably use him a lot like we use Mesador, flip him on the inside and outside. He's already a big body guy already as, as a true freshman. Um, and, you know, obviously he was a sack monster. This guy was going crazy at Central. So he's a guy that absolutely expect to get out there and get a lot of reps um, freshman year. Um, and uh, one last name I'll probably bring up here. Secondary, uh, Jaden Harris. He's uh, he seems to be impressing, and there's, there's uh, feelings that he'll be probably the backup at the star position behind Couch, depending on the alignments. Um, and uh, he'll probably be the third safety in, um, which is pretty impressive for a second year guy. He, he's a fast guy. We played him at corner a little bit. I remember he, he got he got put in and got roasted and pulled his ass right back out, but uh. Mm-hmm. He is one of the faster guys on the team and um, looks like he's he developed his body kind of naturally and it looks like he's going to be uh, – right now you can count on him to be our third safety. 
So that's pretty much all the notes I got from us. Uh, over to you, Silver. Very nice. <laughs> Been watching a lot of Bull Rat lately, man. <laughs> that's a good one. Shout out to Bull Rat, bro. <laughs> Shit's stupid funny. It um, is. There I, got a lot, I got a lot of shit going on in, in, at Gainesville right now, so I'm gonna start with uh, coaching news. Uh, spoke about it last week. It was some some smoke about Jamar Cheney at, exiting to a Western Kentucky University. It's official now. Um, shout out to him. Big loss on the recruiting front, but absolutely deserved. Uh, wouldn't be surprised to see Jamar Cheney back in the orange and blue within a year or two. I don't think there's no secret out there that. Uh, one of these coaches is going to eventually get another job, and I think he's going to be the first guy to get called. So you heard it here first. Um, we brought in our receiver coach. It's been a little while. And we started spring spring ball without one. Billy Gonzalez, as you heard with John Bostic earlier in the show, we spoke about it, uh, has been hired as the uh, wide receiver coach. Third time back. Uh, was gone one year. Uh, spent some time down in Fort Lauderdale, not Fort Lauderdale, in Boca with uh, FAU and Willie. Was in Marshall. And then he interviewed with like eight or nine other coaches. You know, it took him a little while, but Billy landed on Billy Gonzalez. I'm um, not mad at the hire. I think it's a B hire. There's nothing for me to be upset about it. Um, some of the fans were uh, mentioning or have the opinion that he recruited poorly his last uh, go around with Dan Mullen. When you look at the stars on paper, I thought he recruited at a high level. I mean, the stars speak for themselves. The evals were off. Um, the big body receivers like Jaquavion Frazier's, uh, Xavier Henderson. Uh, we just had a bunch of the same guys. Trevor, Trevor, Trevor Grimes. You look at our roster now. It's just a lot of the same bodies. Um, Jamarcus Weston out of Cluston. All these guys were 6'2", 6'3", 6'4", bigger receiver. Not a lot of twitch. Not a lot of wiggle. We didn't have any slot receivers. Um, and that was a lot, a lot of the evals coming from the top as well. Um, can, can Billy recruit better than he did? Yeah, but it wasn't bad recruiting. He recruited very good on paper. Uh, he could have recruited better, but that start that energy starts at the top. Billy has recruited well at LSU, Georgia, under Urban Meyer before. You look at his resume, it speaks for itself from a longevity standpoint. You go Odell Beckham to Percy Harvin, all the way up to now with Van Jefferson, um, Kadarius Toney, all of these different dudes. Like The development is there. The recruiting is there. Uh, he's brought some guys in at every stop he's been at. So um, Jarvis Landry, too, is another guy. I could go on. But the resume's there, you know. Um, why he was at West Virginia or a place like Marshall is because – not West Virginia, uh, FAU and uh, Marshall, because a lot of this stuff in, in football is based off relationships. And um, Billy Gonzalez is on his latter years as a wide receiver coach. He's not going to be looking to go to the NFL or anything. I think he's probably going to – coach receiver for another couple years here and then we're possibly gonna pull this uh pass this on to David Decker uh and who I know they was on the edge of their seat of hiring but it just wasn't good timing uh we just hired a 29 year old defensive coordinator and also a 34 year old tight end coach and we already young the, the youngest staff in the country bringing a young David Decker over on as wide receiver coach who the recruiting class you guys just seen this past year it was a lot of uh Benedict Hypolite on the off on the off field, who has a lot of relationships down in South Florida. Why I felt so confident about us getting Andy Jean um, was was largely based on uh, the relationships off the field. So David Decker was a guy they was looking to hire, but it just wasn't good timing. Uh, so to bring in a seasoned guy to groom David Decker, I think Billy Gonzalez was a good hire. Nothing bad about it. Um, what you guys think? What do you think, C? Yeah, I don't have um, as far as that hire. I don't have. Uh... I don't think it's a bad or a good hire in regards to that. My my only issue with the hire is, I guess Billy he had the whiff on a certain certain amount of coach for him to make this hire now. Because if he, if he was going to Gonzalez, he could have did this from the jump and avoided. Um, I uh, guess he don't the know gap. Gonzalez though, he got he got a hire. One thing, if he he had to, he had to interview Gonzalez for the job. What's going on? Go, go ahead, bro. Because my yeah. internet acting a little funny. Go ahead. No, you good. Um. He couldn't hire him from the go because he didn't know Billy. Billy Billy had to interview for the job. Like he don't have a prior relationship with Billy, so he interviewed all guys. Um, Billy was just the one that was available and could have been hired from gate from go because he didn't have a he don't have a, have a current job. But he didn't know Billy from a personality. And a lot of this is based on relationships. So he did interview like nine other people. I don't know about whiffs. Uh, they had some guys. Everybody on the list that he interviewed, we could have hired. Um, it wasn't super thrown, blown away by any name on the list, to be honest with you. There's some names that I like, but it was no no name out there that was just like, I mean, there was 
of course, every time a receiver job becomes available, Miami Gator fans, whoever is going to bring up Brian Hartline, but it's just not an option. It's not realistic. Yeah, it's so not outside happening. of this, this shit's not happening. So outside of that, bro, like oof, there's no name that's going to impress me that much. So just look at his resume. I think it's solid. Um, uh, and, and and the next move is going to be David De- David Decker. You know. Um, same thing I think with, with Jaluk. If he leave, I wouldn't be surprised. The guy I just spoke about being hyperlight, I wouldn't be surprised if he get an on field job. These guys are just in the same cloth as Jamar Chaney. You seen Jamar Chaney just lead the w, uh, w, uh, WKU, Western Kentucky? There's there these guys are, are, are the next hires to maybe go on field at another program because they haven't been on the field yet, but they're talented, they can recruit, they're young. And we got them in our fold. So we got a good off-the-field staff of guys that are going to be promoted in the future. It's not going to be these old retread names that you're going to start seeing, but fans are going to freak out when they see young names as well because they're just new, fresh names. But if you don't put them on the field, Western Kentucky is going to come grab them, you know, and, and, and put them to use on that field like they did with Jamar Chaney. But um, that's my that's my whole thing behind um, that. And he could get out here and start coaching. Um, relationship-wise, he know a lot of these kids already that, that, that's on our wide receiver board. He has relationships with him. Uh, he know the lay of the land in Florida. Uh, he just got to step his game up as far as the, the wide receiver board. Uh, Billy Napier also is one of the, like, he's a legendary wide receiver coach himself at Bama. Like, the, the players yeah, that receiver coach. Yeah. yeah. And that's who's been him, David Decker. Those guys have been holding it down at spring practice while we didn't have a coach. So it wasn't like we was missing these guys when getting any instructions. Um I expect the board, as far as recruiting, to be set by and, e- and evaluated by Billy and the Army of Nerds, not just on – we're not going to put that on uh, Billy Gonzalez. And I don't think Billy Gonzalez, that was all his body type. Dan Mullen likes the shooting guard body type at wide receiver, so you've seen a lot of that. Guys that went twitched up. But um, what else I got? Just sh- shooting guard body type. <laughs> That's what he. That's what they called it, bro. You know, behind the scenes, because of course he had those <laughs> questions too about like, there's no wiggle. I think when Kadarius Tony left, there was an obvious like void of slot wide receivers. We didn't have any this past year. Like, like true, we had to bring in Ricky Pearsall to be that guy, but that was an emergency situation when they got on campus and seen there was no true slot with any wiggle to separate. But uh, what else we got here? That's it for coaching changes. Oh, Utah game was was announced for Thursday. There was a window where they, uh, where they could have decided oh, on the Pac-12 there, out though. there. So they decided to make it a Thursday um, from an advantage standpoint. If 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 I'm out there in Utah, I like I like it for Utah. You know, like how many Gator fans gonna want to travel out here on a fucking Thursday? You know, before Labor Day weekend, kind of kills the vibes. But uh, I'm going regardless. I'm trying to get out there to Salt Lake. They gotta smell this cologne, baby. You know what I'm saying? Sound like a good one. And speaking of games, um, 2020, it was just now FSU just um, announced the 2024 first game of the season. It's going to be played against Georgia Tech in Dublin, Ireland. So I think that was that's pretty cool for FSU, especially from a brand perspective to get a cross country. Also, the players, too, to do something different. Now, from a selfish perspective like me, I would have loved that game to be in Atlanta um, like it was originally scheduled to be, but not. Nah, Having uh, we'll go to Atlanta anytime, dog. We're going to Ireland. We'll go to Ireland, man. I would, I, I would hop on that flight. You ain't fucking with Ireland. Man, we gotta go to Ireland. I'm dog. thinking about it, bro. But I don't. I don't they got to meet real. Know, one, one of my boys, man. <laughs> told, real, baby. One of my boys told me about uh, going to you countries. Got a vegan McRib? One of my countries. Well, not, <laughs> one of my boys told me about going to countries where there's not too many black people, man. I don't know if there's many black people out in Ireland, but I think that that, that, that could go both fun, ways, too, though. That could go both ways. I think. I just don't. I want to go to. I'm single. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm single without kids. I ain't the risk. Nah, that def- that definitely be a, oh, uh, look how lovely a good thing for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Very, very yeah. nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to find out. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to have my Miami. But no, no, I'm going to look at you. That, 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 that could be a little... Yeah, how often you never trip, you're you never gonna have a real reason right, to go to something. Ireland. Like, you might as well take that trip, bro. Right, right, right. That'd be awesome, man. Say I'm froze. Yeah. Say I'm froze. Hold on. Yeah, it's 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 evident right now, but I just kept it rolling. But uh, that's cool though. Yeah, my own oh, should be cool. cool. Man, and what, that's uh, yeah. that's season after next. Yeah, 2024. Um, not oh. this uh, cause, uh, coming season, but next year. And also, it's yeah. a week zero game. So, I like that week zero oh, shit. Because okay, yeah. <laughs> you get two two bye weeks within the season. I, I like that idea a lot. 
Yeah, yeah, but yeah. you ain't never had no no real reason to go to Ireland, bro. You might as yeah. well go. You got all, and, and you got at all. You got two years of plan. Yeah, almost. Yeah, you right. So yeah, you I'm about to be trying to yeah, see, that too. Look at tickets, man. And... You kind of know you're gonna win that bitch too. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to fly overseas. Yeah, Georgia Tech. Shit. Lose the Georgia Tech. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. I ain't doing that shit, bro. For <laughs> <laughs> no Bama matchup or no shit. Man. Now, yeah, we go. Now we go over there and lose the Georgia Tech. Well, that's gonna be pissed off. But you right. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> No, you're not though, because you're gonna be in play Ireland play. still. You're gonna be like, you know what? I'm in Ireland, bro. Let me go. Let me see what they right, do. right, right. The land has to offer. But that week, I, that week, I come back though. Won't be pissed <laughs> off. Yeah, you, know, long yeah, you ain't got to do the same energy. You can be like, man, my Wi-Fi don't work out here, so I ain't gonna do the same <laughs> energy. If we look the time scale, we, we like, we, we like seven. We like yeah, seven, way seven, all, all, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All good reasons. Yeah, I want to go. Yeah, I'm acting like my team plan. Yeah, right. Come mind, on over, hang out, man. I got like who like these fans complaining about a third. Like my shit a little different anyway. It's so my work. I don't have. No, I won't mind that either. Going out to Salt, Salt Lake, Lake. Thursday, cause, come on, because you get to enjoy your weekend as well too. If you want to could be back, I think that'd be yeah. a, your Labor Day weekend. I think that'd be a, a pretty cool trip as well. To be honest with you, man, I'm gonna fly out there. I'm leaving the kids. I'm not bringing the kids, man. But I'm gonna fly out there Wednesday evening, and we'll. Like I say you talk Thursday too, man. I be, I went. So there, make sure you check in though too. Make sure you check in. I gotta check in. I don't want no problem. Make sure you check in with them. Ki- yeah, make sure you check in with them killers in Salt Lake. <laughs> make Salt sure you Lake. check in. Salt Lake Mormon gangsters. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't want no pressure. Um, I am gonna get me a vacay right. pack mail ahead of time though. <laughs> I gotta get an Airbnb. Hey, shout out to D Rod, man. Shout to D Rod. He, he friend of the show. You know, D Rod been around the country a little bit. Say what's up, fellas. Ireland is gonna be dope. The Irish whiskey gonna be elite. She kind of okay. sold me then, but I might have to make that trip then for sure. Appreciate gotta it, bro. It. Gotta make it, bro. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna fly in. I'm gonna fly yeah, in Wednesday. Been around. We'll catch the game Thursday. I'll, I'll sightsee Friday and Saturday and fly back, bro. You know, just make it a weekend. But it's a lot of sights. I stayed in uh, Salt Lake overnight because a, a flight got stuck. I got jammed out there in the airport. Um, so I know the drinking laws and all that shit is weird when you're trying to like drink alcohol. They got a lot of different weird laws. But the scenery just from the airport is just like it's amazing. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. amazing, bro. Yeah. Damn. All right. What happened? I was just thinking, what's a weird drinking law at the airport at that? They got like alcohol percentages and so many drinks oh. you can have. Like it's it's weird. It's it's Mormon. Like it's very religious. Yeah, you know, yeah. A lot of this stuff is based around beliefs and whatnot. So it's it's super strict out there. That's how it was when I went to Tulsa. I didn't know they had like little people had a time All Star Weekend. Boy, I know that shit. <laughs> they had a time trying to main that shit for All Star Weekend. But I went to Tulsa, bro. You couldn't on... get. You couldn't get cold beer unless it was three point two percent. Yeah, it's like that. Yeah, I was like, huh? So like, Bud Light is like four point two, but they make a three point two percent Bud Light that they would ship out there, I guess. Right. So yeah, three point two percent Budweiser. I was like, bro, what in the hell is this? But it's crazy because you know, being being in a state like Florida or something that you you're not really aware like all those different state laws when it comes to um, certain things like you know. Yeah, those those ones, those states that's real street. Like that, man. Like yeah, that. nah, we ain't rocking with that, bro. Cut all that shit out, bro. We got he get ready to run for president. Yeah, Facts. Trump, man. Uh, I'm gonna do some post visit reviews real quick. Fletcher West Paul, a four star prospect out of Leesburg, Virginia. Yeah, um, he was on campus as well. Yeah, I had a several day visit. Big kid, big kid. Um, I like where we at with his recruitment. Don't don't think he's deciding to maybe rep before the season at the earliest. He has eight visits set up. Like you said, like CJ said, he visited Florida State as well. He was on our, our campus a couple of days. He has eight visits set up for April. Um, Going to take his official visits over the summer. But I like where he's standing as a recruitment. He hasn't. He doesn't have a decision date right now, but he's saying some good things. He liked the, the campus. He liked the fact that we have two offensive line coaches. Uh, he, he spoke about it being 15 players in, in, on the offensive line, and it's a lot of attention that needs to go towards that. So he's a fan of that being set up. Rob Sell and Darnell Stapleton are doing a good job recruiting him. Just want to update the people on that. I think that's a kid that we could possibly land, and he's a, he's a kid that could play too. Um, another post-visit, you know, just hearing some things. Kanan Daniels, a four-star running back out of West Point, Mississippi. He's right in that slave belt. Going to be a tough one to pull out of that area, but a 5'11". Uh, 190 pound running back right now, and that's solid between the tackles, top end speed. He played a little bit of everything on that on that West Point team. Uh, played a little quarterback, 
uh, wide receiver running back. They are a, a run heavy offense, so it's not like he was dropping back like Peyton Manning and no shit. Um, but he was a big player on that offense. Uh, he's not going to decide anytime soon. He wants to take all of his visits and 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 go through the whole process. It's going to be tough pulling the kid out of there if he starts getting the LSU offers and the Mississippi's and just tough to pull a kid out of there. But I wouldn't mind him being our second back in his class. Love his film. He's a composite four star. I think that's going to rise in the rankings a little bit. But kid can play. Uh, right. Xavier Fiasami came back to the Sunshine State, visited Florida again. Um, He's out of Texas right now. He's a safety. We have him very high on our board. Uh, he's also, I think, number one on Georgia board. He's actually visiting Georgia next week. And also USC and Oregon is on on, on the docket. But he's originally from Orlando, Florida. So it's, it's a lot of familiarity. He loved being back, loved being close to his family here. Um, and he definitely say Florida's in the thick of things. But we'll see where we at with it. We'll see if Corey Ramey has that whole room now. Like the boy he got said, like the way he recruits. We'll see if we can close in on his kid. We didn't offer him to January, and we got some things moving. Like where we at in his recruitment. Uh, Ethan Calloway is a 6'7", 300-pound kid that comes from Morrisville, North Carolina. Um, shout out to Morrisville. They have a, I, I got recruited by a D2 school, Morrisville, North Carolina. Uh, he wrapped up a multi-visit, multi-day visit as well uh, before heading to Tallahassee. He was out there kicking it. With, there's going to be a lot of Florida State battles. He also spoke on the two offensive line coaches. He just That's 2025. Um, yeah, 2025 five star, right? Correct, correct. 2025 yeah, okay. five star. Um, he he spoke yeah. on that. I mean, we hearing a lot of that from the offensive line recruits. They like that it's two offensive line line coaches, and by all means, we need to close because we set up the staff that way. Um, high emphasis on the importance of that position, and also from a recruiting standpoint, we should be at an advantage. So we'll see what we have with with him. Like the start to his recruitment. Um, he got to see some practices and 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 see some things happen right there in the trenches. Uh, another Florida State battle, a lot of Florida State battles this cycle. L.J. McCray, product out of Daytona mm. Beach. That's um, my guy, man. Yeah, yeah, crazy man. Going. Small world. Small world. We gonna see if Odell and his fishing pole can what he got. You know, see see a jet like fishing pole <laughs> and shit. Think got a cane pole. Yeah, cane pole, cane pole for <laughs> sure. <laughs> No, he's yeah, definitely a cane pole. Yeah, yeah, he, he strike me as a cane pole guy. Uh, I, I yeah, love. Oh yeah, Odell ain't got no real. Hell no, nah. <laughs> ain't no real, bro. No real. <laughs> he throwing that bitch snatching, bro. Right. No right. real. Is, no <laughs> real. Right. Throwing that bitch snatching, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna call, call a game before y'all see you out there with no real, bro. <laughs> like yo, get this man. He ain't got no real. <laughs> <laughs> got a cane pole and a bobber, baby. That's legal. Right. <laughs> the game is all we need. Uh, McCray's, McCray's stock is, is is skyrocketing. I think he's a you know, top top fifty type talent. Uh, love that it's coming down. A Florida kid's coming down to two Florida schools. We'll see where we at with it. Chance Robinson, four star receiver, just to bring him up. That's going to be a Miami battle, in my opinion. He has Auburn and some other SEC schools and some other some other programs he's talking to. But I think that's going to be a, a Florida. Uh, Miami battle. He's been on record. They they asked him about the the absence of uh, Colbert. He spoke about like the interest level still being the same. He loves everything. He spoke about being uh, Benedict Hypolite and his relationship being from South Florida. You can hear a lot of receivers just bring up David Decker and Benedict Hypolite in all of these interviews. So uh, nothing has changed with Chance Robinson. We're in a good standing. He wants to play with DJ Lagway. Thinks DJ Lagway is a special player. I love our wide receiver board. Billy gonna have some shit to work with when he show up. Like they got a good board set, so it's not like he's gonna have to try to figure things out recruiting wise, man. He also got some killers on campus. Um, another thing too, just on receiver, why are we talking about that? Like, like just from the game, let's talk some football shit. Like last year, what we seen, there's like every receiver ain't got to be fast to separate. You know, we're saying that like we got a lot of big body receivers that couldn't separate, and that was our problem last year. Like, regardless of, of, of your size, that's a way to teach routes and how to set up routes to be able to separate. Um, so that was, like, an issue I was having last year. I didn't want to go crazy on Colbert just because, you know, he ain't got the greatest room to work with. But regardless of when when Billy showed up with, with Freddie Swain and, and, and Young Hammond and those guys that weren't fast, super fast guys that were track guys, but they separated. Uh, I think we're going to see – 
wide receivers se- separate a little bit different, even with the, the, the guys that aren't fast or, or twitchy like Xavier Henderson, you're going to see him start separating a little bit better with, with Billy Gonzalez back. That's a take that I got from just the wide receiver side. Um, what else I got from recruiting? A few visits that got set up that, that I'm interested in. I'm going to do a, another logo talk. We've been doing the short form, form content heavy on IG. We're going to pick it up on YouTube. Uh, get out, we're gonna do some, keep the reels and the shorts going, but we're gonna do some some middle form, some nine ten minute uh, drops of logo logo talks for each program, and I get into more offers and 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 visits that have been set up. But these are some key ones that I like. Uh, Jordan Seaton, a six foot five, two hundred ninety five pound offensive lineman out of Washington D.C., uh, will be visiting March twenty through the twenty first. Uh, Isaiah Thomas visited in January, uh, got an offer back then. Uh, you're going to see a body type, man. Love these body types of the type of players they're getting. Uh, but 6'2", 195-pound junior. Um, he's visiting UF on April 6th through the 8th. First day on campus, multi-day visit. Um, Florida State, Penn State, Auburn, Oklahoma, Minnesota, Maryland are programs that are recruiting him at the time. Uh, another offer that I like and I think is sneaky good. Uh, Gatlin Bear out of Idaho. Idaho's number one player, 6'2", 180-pound guy. Gatlin Bear. What a name, man. Nah, that's, I like that one. Gatlin Bear. What a name, dog. What a name. You know you know what I say about uh, great times at the University of Florida. You got to have a white wide receiver on deck, man. Oh, and he uh, played wide out. Okay. Yeah, 6'2", okay. 180. Ran 100 meter time of 10, 5, 3. Hmm, flying, okay. flying. Uh, that fast name sound guy. kind of familiar. We might be in, we might be in the mix somewhere in there. Go ahead. Hope, hope not. <laughs> oh, Catlin Bear. I feel like getting no bidding war with Mr. Rudy. He's down there. Man, y'all done made John mad. He gonna John sue anybody. somebody. That's what we could talk about real quick. Well, I got some more uh, practice <laughs> to get into with, with, with Florida. John Ruiz is suing the NCAA. What say you fellas, man? Real quick, I'll get back into my practice. Get him. <laughs> Who, Who isn't he suing, though? That's the crazy <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the <laughs> My boy John is that's tied up with litigation. <laughs> <All right. laughs> my boy Ruiz, big money, big he, time he, he on he his hand. He's suing for the crazy and stuff, bro. He got, he, oh, he, my gosh. He was suing somebody for joking on him on Twitter. He said, I can sue you for this. And he took him to court, and they threw that shit out real quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Get this shit out of here, John. We got real yeah, shit. John got on. too much time, man. Right. As witnessed by you know his his tweets and responding to everything. Um, like I said, I, I enjoy I enjoy watching the luxury of having that much time. But I, you probably could invest it somewhere a little different. You know, this ain't fantasy football league. You know, I appreciate Probably. all you do uh, <laughs> to help bring in players and all, but. <laughs> This ain't a trash talk boy, though. <laughs> like, you can just let some of the shit fly. Who cares? Uh, what exactly is he suing for? Um, to, I think I think it's around the the Cavalieri twins uh, situation. Um, oh yeah, he basically. I think he they listed him as a booster or some shit, and he's yeah. suing him for being listed as a booster. Come on, bro. Yeah, it, it's and that's why I say is you get because we spoke on it briefly before is. I know I don't know because I'm not a lawyer, but I do know so much of this stuff just gets caught up in language and how things are interpreted, and that's kind of where the judge comes in to decide how to officially interpret a lot of this stuff. Um, you know, that, that's where they really get down to to they like the referee in that courtroom because the law is the law, but they kind of decide how, how this stuff's interpreted. Interpret- but bottom line is, um. Yeah, man, he just he just be wilding a little bit, dog. I, don't, I ain't gonna try to call it nothing no different than that. But uh, the checks do be clear for what Life Wallet, man. So uh, sign up with Life Wallet, man. Life Wallet Sports. Um, why not? I'm a bad brother. Yeah, no, don't be like that, man. You know what I'm saying? Get your checks up, man. Get the checks clear. Hey, he bought us a he bought us a number fourteen basketball team in the country. You know what I mean? Hey, the boys in the turn. Also bought y'all some sanctions. Man, I'm a little old sanctions. Little we gonna get sanctions anyway. We wake up the sanctions. Just don't cry about it. Then when they happen, though, they don't be the, they don't be the energy when them shits come down. I mean, oh, it's just always Miami. <laughs> it's always us. They rather get <laughs> us. Uh, embrace that shit, if y'all. If that's y'all right. bag, embrace it. You know, what I'm saying? I do. I don't be sweating that shit. Mm-hmm. I mean, they do be just fucking with us, but hey, come with the game. 
It, it is what it is. Slaps on the wrist, man. Gave Katie Meyer a couple of days off, man. Enjoy yeah. your time, Katie. Well, she already did, matter of fact. She already took that time off. Yeah, Ruiz lead the league in useless lawsuits. Yeah, that's useless. Right. Frivolous, man. Now, what you doing? You got money to blow, man. Yeah. Take him to court. Fucking, that's a losing call. He ain't winning a dime yet. <laughs> not yet. Not one. <laughs> uh, over. <laughs> That boy Shaq from the free throw line when it comes to my office and offers. Throwing up bricks, bro. Uh, All right, back to my back to my uh, practice. We haven't. We're not that. We're in the shells. Uh, we are on spring break, just like CJ and them. So we pause practice. Don't like that, man. I wish we could figure out oh, how to do spring yeah. break. Before, we doing the same uh, thing. Yeah. I don't the boys like gonna come shit. back to the twenty first. Yeah, it's a little weird. So, yeah, I don't like that. Split that shit, yeah. yeah, like how you get acclimated for three days, getting past, and then you take a week off and you still acclimated to everything. Like right, you, know, you, you gotta hope they want to just keep playing ball on a break. I mean, that's just your hope and dream. But in Miami, I don't know. I got my doubts. They they probably on the boat. You know what I mean? Soaking up spring break. I would too. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm glad, but they shouldn't have let us go then. I'm at least take three days a while out. It's so competitive now, and it's like it depends on where you at with it. But you almost mm-hmm. got to stay locked in because you're trying to earn a job. You can't really even enjoy it's true. Spring. Any recruit, any player on campus, enjoy especially spring if some, Especially if you're in some tough battles like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You got you got to stay locked in and training. You can't even really shut it down to go hang out. Right? Go back home, see the fam. You know, kiss yeah. kiss kiss, kiss the, the young cousins and babies and shit like that. And you got to get back right. to in the trenches. That's why work. I say give me about three days. Let me get let me get like a three day. You know. Go hang out weekend, yeah, and then I come on back and we'll get we'll get back to getting to work. Yeah, just you need an outlet to throw some drip on, but you can't go full full long spring break like like normal athletes. Yeah, like normal the kids, kids, normal yeah, students. Yeah, yeah. Uh, defense, man. I'm gonna start the defense side of the ball. Hearing some good things. Uh, the trenches is gonna be way better, and I think the downfall of everything starts up front. Uh, the downfall of our season last year was right at the defensive tackle, and and also just getting to the pass, and we could have been a little bit better. You look at the numbers; it looks okay, right? Like um, we just went closing when we got to the spot. You know, you, CJ keep putting these same fucking Travis uh, highlights up, and I just keep getting frustrated. Every time I scroll by them, bitch, I'm just like, we had this motherfucker, man. Like we had, it, and in those plays, if we make those plays, I know we win the game. Those are critical moments in the game. Oh, a big time. Um, that's what people. That's what people fail to realize too. They talk about. They try to throw your shots at your defensive, right? Okay, cool, 100 right deep. But you got to understand the moment of the fucking game of them plays happened. Like, he was making those plays or something. That was third and 10. Like, some big time there. Yeah, we we, we know our up. fucking field goal kicker. We take a right. sack. Yeah. We Y'all, might, we might we was at 21 14. Yeah, we were at 21 14. Yeah. AR kind of hot. Like, momentum wise, you make that sack shit a little different. But I said all that to say this defense line is looking a lot better up front. Uh, we brought in transfer Cameron Jackson from Memphis. Uh, 6'6", 355 pound guy, established himself in the weight room. He's looking great as a leader. Um, and his film, it reflects a lot of what we just hearing, but they're excited about him. And also Caleb Banks, the Louisville transfer. I don't expect him to start. He has more years of eligibility left because he only came in after like being a freshman at Louisville. So he has some time to grow, but a similar frame is Gervon, Jervon. I learned that too last week. Similar frame, frame is Jervon Dexter, 6'7", 350. Um, his get off looks great. From the clips that I'm seeing, but they're not, they haven't been fully padded, so I don't want to go crazy. They've been a skeleton right before spring break. Um, Will Norman and Kelby Collins came on campus ready to go. Um, Will Norman got a crazy 400 plus bench press that was on, on on IG. When you see him on on anything social media uh, that the football team's putting out, looks huge. SEC ready man, um, kid out of IMG IMG Academy that transferred back to New Jersey. Was also a kid that I was concerned on. I brought up on this show saying I don't know if he's living up to his his ranking, um, but he's checking out on campus, man. He's he's starting to figure out the position. He hasn't been playing in a long time, but some things are starting to click for him. Uh, early enrolling for both of those guys was just huge. I think we're gonna see both of them play meaningful minutes this this fall. Uh, Kelby Collins, another guy killing the weight room, five hundred and forty five pound squat. Uh, just absolutely looking crazy uh, when it pertains to the weight room, and it's also translating to the football field. Um, they're expecting big things from from Kelby this fall. Uh, he may jump some guys on the depth chart, but the trenches is going to look a lot better. Um, and that I think that was our biggest issue right down the middle: uh, defensive line, linebacker, and safety. We, we were weak at every position in the show. You can't stop nobody if you're weak down the middle. Um, another guy I've been speaking highly of, Miguel Mitchell. 
just weight room stuff. He's going to be, he's probably our best safety right now, just talking to the staff and people behind the scenes. Uh, Kamari Wilson's the other guy beside him, but Miguel Mitchell, uh, six foot one, six two guy uh, from Alabama. I said last week he had verified, verified speed of 442. He's clean. They putting out the weight room stats and stuff, bro. He's cleaning with the linemen. He cleaned 335 as safety. You put two and two together when you get four four forties, cleaning 335 pounds. Explosive guy, you know what I'm saying? I'm expecting a breakout season from him this his fall. Just need him to stay healthy and everything gonna be all right. Um, I do want to bring in and then there is a urgent need to bring in another safety uh in the transfer portal. There's a few spots that I know we're gonna try to get some guys after this spring when that spring transfer portal window open. Uh safety's gonna be one of those spots. Feeling good about corner, a lot of options. Just need guys out of no contact jerseys, but uh Devin Moore, um, Man, forget Jalen Kimber from from the guy from Georgia. All these guys are getting healthy. They're looking good. Jason Marshall, I think, is also going to start living up to his billing. Um, Corey Raymond has his hands more on coverages and things he want to do. Uh, Jason Marshall is going to benefit more from putting his hands on people and being able to do things. I think Corey Raymond going to lock into and tap into that that potential that we was missing out from just from a scheme standpoint. Things we couldn't do that was limited to him. So looking forward to Jason Marshall's development. I would say offensively. Murder Mertz, baby. No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I ain't ready to lie yet. <laughs> I'm just playing. No Murder Mertz, but I'm hearing he's solid, dog. You know, just being making the leading the team. He approached the offseason how they expected, you know, a leader to to, to approach it. Uh, similar to how AR approached the offseason, just from a professional, getting the guys together. We're getting a lot of that from my man, Jack Miller, the, the, the backup quarterback to AR last year. And the start of the the bowl game, the Las Vegas Bowl, we, we weren't getting a lot of that from him, preparation wise, uh, leadership wise. We're getting that from Graham Mertz. Uh, they're pretty much giving him the job to lose at this point, and he's doing a good job of just you know fending fending Jack Miller off. Uh, we'll see where we are with it. He was a highly rated out of high school. They're saying good things about him. He was still, and then a quarterback's another spot too. We're gonna look to bring in a quarterback in this next window. Uh, this is what it is. I said after we missed on Rashada. It's going to be important, and they have to go get another guy um, to fill in. You can't just go a, a cycle without a guy. So I expect them to go after somebody. There's a lot of quarterback battles around the country. You look at uh, Ole Miss. They got three guys that are going to battle it out. Um, same thing at Bama, Georgia, uh, Texas. A lot of programs are going to have a lot of quarterback battles. The quarterback portal is going to get popping out the spring, man. People are going to vote. And just hope we take advantage of it. Uh, Keontae Goodwin. 6'8", 350-pound, five-star from Kentucky. He's living up to the building of his recruiting, man. Right now, like I said, I'm not going to go crazy with it because we're not in full pads. But as of right now, he's a starting right tackle uh, ahead of super transfer, super senior transfer uh, Damian George from Alabama. So it's good to see that a sophomore is beating out a super senior. So he's earning the job right now. Uh, but the two deep right there is, is going to be impressive. Austin Barber has that left tackle spot anchored down and locked down. Offensive line. Run game is going to be our strength again. Um, the running back room is for sure with it already. Montreal Johnson, Trevor Etienne back. But Cam Carroll is going to be the icing on the cake in that room. Uh, looking like a solidified third back to transfer from Tulane. We got a legit three-man rotation. We'll see more as we get into you know contact and practice and, and players being able to be taken to the ground fully. But right now the offense is looking sharp as far as run game, blocking, don't know a whole lot about the past. We we haven't scrimmaged yet. I think the first scrimmage is the 20th. I have to look at my notes. I have it before the end of the show, but I think the first scrimmage <clears> is the 20th. <throat> Hearing some good things, man. We'll just see what it is when we get back. But uh, I think we're on par. You know, looking looking at the talent overall, I think Grand Mercs have more weapons to work with than than the AR had for sure. AR had an atrocious room. Uh, Andy Jean is going to play early. Uh, and we haven't got Eugene Wilson on campus, who's it was lights out fast. He's gonna be able to play early as well. Um, and we we're gonna add. A, I think we're gonna go after another receiver in the transfer portal in this in the spring window. So weapons wise, Graham Mertz gonna have some tools to work with. You know, protection wise, he'll have a lot of tools, a lot of work, man. Uh, Michael Mazuka, the transfer from Baylor, hearing that he's gonna fill in for O'Torrance very well. He graded out as one of the top offensive guards in the country. Um, hearing great things from him from a leadership perspective and, you know, him being able to make calls and do a lot of things in the trenches. Uh, ready to go, man. Spring football, full-fledged. 
Uh, can't make the spring game, but I'm still going to do some spring coverage. But that's where we at with it. Very good. All right. Uh, I think CJ fell out. All good. Yeah. <laughs> Two shows almost three hours, man. We we'll appreciate y'all yeah. for hanging out with us. Like, subscribe, comment, all of that. Uh, a lot of updates on the way when it pertains to Roll Up Network. New website coming in a couple weeks. Uh, gonna be, it's going to be a hell of a platform. We're going message board. We're going full-fledged, everything. But we're going to put our spin and twist on it. It's going to be a little bit of flavor, and uh, we're going on the blockchain. Uh, so big, big upgrades on the way when it pertains to the platform. I know y'all see the uptick in the content on all social media platforms. We appreciate y'all for supporting us, for hanging out with us. Um, shout out to my guy, Sean. Shout out to my man, Chris. Just give me some Florida State shout outs. DK always holding us down. Um, just everybody that supports the roll up, pull up with us each and every week. Ben Raw Dice, D Raw, my man CJ Dorsey in the comments. Appreciate you for telling me I was froze. Uh, who else we got? <laughs> Fragrance Journey, my dude. If y'all don't have y'all haven't followed his channel, go follow his channel. Uh, great stuff, friend of the friend of the show. Uh, Chris Card, what it do, my dude? Just wanna give everybody in the comments a shout out. S dot, I know you can hold us down on the timeline. That's what it is. Larry, you got anything? Good out of here. Nah, man, that was good, man. Appreciate all the love. Like I say, IG, YouTube, uh, tell a friend to tell a friend. Um, if you just see anybody with one of the logos on, man, tell them about the show. All they right. either gonna like, they gonna they gonna love, hate it or love it, but might as well pull up and get a taste of the dish we serving up, man. I think it's good. They gonna run into it anyway this year, but we got to turn up a little. <laughs> no Content doubt. gonna be everywhere. We gonna start flooding it. The marketing is gonna be better. Uh, we got a whole fledged team, man. It's all about upgrades and taking the product to a new level. And that's what we about around this. Hey, one time, too, for my man, uh, Chris from LGMG, who set me up with Bostick 561, man. You know we get the money, man. Shout out to Post. No doubt. We right, out. Let's get up out of here, man. Taylor Gang.